It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. Uh another day, man, of quarantined podcast life. Uh salute to everybody who is braving this element called coronavirus to do their podcast uh, in their studios, face to face with people. Um, good luck. You're braver than me. Okay. <laughs> Congra- congratulations. How was your week, Schultz? It was good, my man. It was good, bro. Let's get right into it, dog. People want to know how do you what? feel? Now that the king is back, the king of New York, the king I'm of not, rap, the king of the I'm charts, not, the king of YouTube, you know what I mean? The I, king I'm of not the, a, I'm not even entertaining it, my brother. What you mean, bro? Nah, I'm not entertaining it. Because I'm sim- I'm just not entertaining it. But what what does that mean, not in are you entertained by it? That's, you must be entertained no. by the king. No, not at all. And I think that, you know, um, I hate watching history repeat itself, mm-hmm. especially especially when um, you know everybody should learn from their mistakes. Everybody, right? So, so it's just like you're gonna gas the same thing to happen again. You can't clearly you can't clearly like this person or be entertained by this person the way that you think you are when you know if you didn't learn the first time. I, I, I'll say it like this, and it'll be simple. If you bump your head once and don't learn from bumping your head, mm-hmm. the next time your head's going to get decapitated completely. <laughs> Whoa. So your prediction is the king my of New York gets my, my, assassinated. My, my, my prediction is the same prediction that has always been since two years ago when I was right. You end up in jail or dead. And if you already went to jail and you didn't learn from that, then what happens next? Do y'all think that shit is funny? I, I'm, I'm 41 years old. Like that shit ain't funny to me. Honestly, I don't like seeing self-destruction. I don't. I really, I really honestly, truly don't. But you don't find it funny, dude. Like, I I think it's hilarious. You don't find it funny. What's funny about a man having to move two times in four days? I mean, if you know how awful moving is, that's hilarious. Like, if one of my friends said that they had to move and then move again, I would laugh at the pain that he was about to endure alone like that that'd be so much fun for me but just the idea like posting the pictures of like the mouse putting the mouse in the video telling everybody they mad like you don't find it funny you're a a, you're a person that has a twisted sense of humor you like watching someone bomb on stage why not watch them you know get decapitated again why is that not fun is that your limit Nah, it's not funny i mean it's not funny because you know um when i see a brother I'm not when I see the when I see a person, you know, online constantly explaining themselves over and over again with tears in their eyes. That lets me know exactly where that person is at. Yeah, Jay Z had a bar. I'm gonna give you this Jay Z bar, right? Mm-hmm. Hold on, because I don't want to misquote it. Because I'm really not talking about this shit ever. I, I think I don't think it's something to be entertained. But I'm gonna give you all this bar because Jay Z said it in a rap. And it sums up the situation perfectly. But once again, y'all won't realize this until it's too late. But the bar is, hold on, I'm pulling it up. I don't want to misquote it because it's such a phenomenal bar. Mm-hmm. Um, hold on, hold on. I'm getting to it. I'm on genius. Um, hold on, hold on. Yes. He says, the labeling of a snitch is a lifetime scar. You'll always be in jail, nigga. Just minus the bars. And that's the truth to the matter. But is would you not have snitched in his situation? I would never be in that situation. But hypothetically speaking, you're in that situation, right? Where you're not part of this gang at all, right? You are. No, no. See, you're you're you sound like a person who doesn't want to be held accountable for your actions. At the end of the day, this this is how I've always been. Right. If I if I did something. I need to be held accountable for my actions. I got to deal with the consequences of my actions. I can't look around and say, well, you made me do this. Or you were the cause of that. If I'm with you and I'm doing what he was doing, 
Come on, man. That's a good point. Yeah. You have to be accountable you gotta, for the actions. You got, you got, you got to be held accountable. All of that, all of that, all of that stuff sounds good. All of that. Oh, well, they slept with my baby mom, and you know they tried to kidnap me, and they did X, Y, and Z. And you know, it's no honor among thieves. <sighs> That's, well, what, that's what that's what that's what they do in that world. In that world, wolves cannibalize themselves. Like it is what it is. Like you knew that. Like you, that's not an out. It's right. not an out. So if it's there's not an out. if there's no honor amongst thieves, then why do we expect honor to this code of not snitching? Like why does why is that the no, rule above all rules? No, but there no, are the no question, rules. The, the, the question should be there are no rules, but the question should be uh, if there's no honor amongst thieves. And nobody in that world deserves to be honored. And you don't get you don't get honored. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because you weaseled your way out of a situation. And I honestly, I just don't respect nobody who doesn't learn from their past mistakes. Like, I don't care how smart you come off. Smart people learn from their own mistakes. Wise people learn from the mistakes of others. I see a person that has done neither. So yeah. I just don't think it's not. He I hasn't learned. That, that's for and, sure. And that's, and he, that's hasn't not good. he hasn't that's learned. He hasn't learned. But I think that it does resonate with me a little bit. Like if somebody fucks my baby mama and then like kidnaps me and like does some shit to my mom, I'm not going to assume that they're loyal to me. So if Andrew. you break that loyalty, then don't assume that I'm going to be loyal to you. Your king, your king, your king portrays the image of a gangster, right? Yes. So what should a gangster do if somebody fucks his baby mom? I would call the police if I was having that situation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 Nah, exactly. This, no, you're actually making a really good point. That's all I'm saying. If you're a gangster. You handle that like your, a gangster. Go bust your gun, gangster. You know I what I'm saying? Go, bu go bust your gun. They kidnap you. All right. Go bust your gun. Get back at your people. So that's you're, all I'm saying. If yeah. you're in that lifestyle, that's what you do. See, That's I knew I'm you saying. were going to give good perspective on this for me. So, so you were, you're upset that he was portraying himself in one way and using. I'm gonna be, I'm, no, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I'm upset that he just has not learned his lesson. That's it. Like it's, it's, it's like, yo, you got to have some sense of humility. Cause if you believe in God, if you believe in the universe, whatever you think, you know, got you out of this situation, Whatever higher power got you out of that situation, for you to come right back doing the same old shit, that's a slap in the face to the universe. That's a slap in the face to God. So if you're getting a second chance, um, I think that you should use your second chance for more than just more trolling. I think it's whack. I, I guess what I'm saying is I never saw him as a gangster, and I never bought the idea that he was a gangster. What I, what I always thought was funny about it was that he was clearly not a gangster, but he was basically checking these other dudes who have claimed to be gangster on their gangster, if you will. That's not, check that's not checking. Or he was calling them out. I don't know what that, like in poker, the term is, in poker, the term is check, right? Like, or I'm, call. I'm, 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 I'm from the old school. Calling somebody out is not thumb thugging. Calling somebody out is being somebody face and having that same energy that we have never seen. Right. You know what I'm saying? From, from that young man. I just think it's sad. Um, I know it's going to end badly, just like I told y'all two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I really was hope I was really rooting for him to come home and, you know, change his ways. Like, I don't know why you would come home and set yourself on fire. Like, you should come home and lay low. Be cool. Be calm. By the way, a year, if you, you come home, you be cool. You be calm a year from now. People might forget about this shit. But you right. come home immediately. You come home immediately. And you taunting motherfuckers like right out the gate, right? Who was he taunting? Was it, was he taunting some of the people that? I, I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, jealousy and envy, on top of people not liking you because they think you're an informant, is a very, 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 very volatile mix of ingredients mm. that will not lead to anything good happening to said young man. And once again. You know, the fact you had to, you got to move twice in a few days. That's not, that's not what's up, man. Like that's who wants to live like that. Like I'm at the point in my life where peace of mind is the ultimate for me. I want to walk down the street and be able to mind my business. I can keep my head on a swivel, mm -hmm. you know, but that's just the way I am naturally because I'm a paranoid, anxious person. But I want to live, I want to have peace of mind. 
I don't want to be in a situation where I'm trapped in my own head all the time. I'm trapped in my own thoughts. I'm constantly questioning myself and my decisions. And the decision he made, he's going to be questioning for the rest of his life. And that's why he has to constantly explain. It's all I've seen the past few days is him just constantly explaining why he did what he did and trying to make light of the situation. It's like, bro, you're that. You got to wear that. As Hove said, you'll always be in jail minus the fucking bars, bro. Like you trapped. You can't enjoy none of that. You can't enjoy your life. How many, how many people do you think rap fans really care about the street code? None of them. None, none, none of his fans. Majority of his fans, none of them. But that's not the point. You're right. going to have all of those numbers, all of that, all of those uh, Instagram views and YouTube views and all that. But you still going to be miserable on the inside. Well, we don't know that. Bro, did you see him? Did you watch? I, I saw the clips on Shade Room. Right. His eyes were watering the whole time. He did look like he was going to cry, and he it, did. It, his eyes, hands were eyes, shaking. Eyes watering the whole time. What do you think voice, that was about? Voice cracking. Uh, Just like what I'm telling y'all right now. He's, he's in his head mentally. He knows he fucked up. He knows that shit was whack. He knows that shit wasn't honorable. He knows that shit wasn't gangster. He knows nobody's going to ever really put their arm around him. Right, like he's actually cut, he's shunned by a lot of people. That's not a good feeling. Of it's course not. not. But it's if not. he was never a gangster to start and never really cared to be a gangster in the first place, do you think he cares for the validation of gangsters? Well, he's in his song talking about shooting up chicken spots. What? In that new re- in that new record, he's talking about shooting up chicken spots. So he's still talking about tough guy shit. Wait, like, you listen even- to the words of a Takashi Six Nine song? Well, actually, somebody somebody sent me that. Somebody okay. told me. All right. Somebody yeah. told me that. You know what I mean? But the, the point is, yes, he gives a fuck. What are you talking about? He's a kid that 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 needs this validation. Yeah. Yes. Of course. He's a he's a young kid. It's the, it's their era. They like likes. They like retweets. They like comments. Why do you think he's under everybody's post? Why do you think he's always on shade room? He's right there watching all of this shit just like the rest of us. Yes, he gives a flying fuck. He cares tremendously. Outside of, let's say we're aliens and we're looking at this situation just as aliens, not people who have... I I, I can't believe you got me to talk about this bullshit. I have not talked about this shit on Breakfast Club at all. Oh, really? I'm not, I don't, I don't feel, I'm not entertaining it. I'm really not. Like, I'm not, I'm like, I don't, I think it's, I think it's sad. I really do. I'm not even lying to you. I think it's sad and you just see where this kid is going to end up. And it's, it's just like, God damn. Right. Man. It's almost like right being in quarantine. And this is what I mean by that. Like when you're in quarantine, eventually we get so mentally exhausted. Yeah. That, that we're willing to say, fuck it. And yep. go back outside, even if it's a threat. Right. We, we, we over it. We're like, man, fuck this shit. I can't sit in this house. I can't. Right. I can't do it. I got to go out. Even though, even though it's a threat, that's how he's going to be. Can't hide forever. You're not going to want to stay in the house forever. He's a young kid. You're not mm. going to want to stay cooped up forever. Mm. It's not. He's absolutely not. And it's going to be one of them times when he decides to pop out. And it's it, it's going to be bad for him. You think people will be waiting for him? Bro, I think that we live in an era of clout, cloudy clout chasing motherfuckers. Mm. And I think that somebody would do something just to get a rep. They would do something. They would do yeah. something just to get attention. You know what I, I'm saying? I saw. Yeah. I saw academics, man. Salute to my guy, Act, and I, I'm I, I rock with Act. But I saw Act post something, man. Act posted a video of some rapper. I never heard of the, the, the young brother's name, but the young brother said, "Man, don't go after him. Kill his mama. Kill his child." I'm like, y'all can't see this shit, y'all. Y- y- I, I th- it went too far a year ago, two mm. years ago, whenever it was. Y'all don't see what the fuck y'all are doing again? Like, how are we making the same fucking mistake again? Right. Like, how? How is media making the same mistake? You know what I'm saying? By, by, by fueling this shit. How are, how, is, how are the rappers making the same mistake by replying to this, this kid? Like, why is he making the same mistakes by coming out? Still on some like rah rah shit. Like why, hey, bro? Like why? Why is sad, man? It really is sad. I'm not gonna lie to you. As far it's as very me- sad. As far as media goes, and as far as like us uh, leaning into it, I don't think our behavior is any different 
than it has been for past rap beefs, right? Some rap rappers beef. We start getting into comments. We go, oh, Drake killed this guy or Meek got bodied or Pusha T killed Drake. Like we go in, we lean in and Drake goes out and interviews and he's like, yo, it's going to be some violence if anything had, you know, if we see that guy and probably because we're leaning in and saying what a big deal it is. So I don't know if our energy is really any different. Like I think we're looking at a lot of times rappers like they're wrestlers when in reality it ain't wrestling it, a lot of times it's, it's real it, it's it's never been wrestling and Pac and big should have showed you that right you know, when Pac when Pac was you know telling people like look it's the media y'all the ones fueling this shit mm. y'all the ones give us the platform for this shit y'all the ones gas this shit up you know like he was right you know and, and don't get me wrong I, I, it's not the, it's not the media's fault because the media is not making any of those brothers do anything. Those brothers are doing what they're doing and the media is reacting to it. But it comes a point in time where somebody has to have some social responsibility and say, you know what? I don't want to be responsible for that shit. You know what I mean? I don't want to be responsible for that energy. I'm not going to give that energy a platform. I'm not going to put any fuel on that fire. I'm just not doing it. Yo. So if I, if, I am, if I am having this conversation right now, uh, I would just have this conversation saying that I recognize the role all of us play in this shit. And sometimes you got to save people from themselves because clearly he don't know no better. Yeah, but I do. But I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, That's all it, I'm saying. It, yeah. No, it, it does make sense. Um, huh. Yeah, I just I guess I you make an interesting point about the media that I never really thought about, like. And the responsibility the media plays because, and you hear about this all the time in politics, right? You hear about the responsibility of the media and politics and the politics and the media misleading people on both sides of the aisle, right? Yeah. And I mean, he's going to get into, he's going to get the attention because, but he, has, I guess, he clearly, he clearly I, has people. I get, I, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is like, at what point in time do we start putting responsibility on the media for other things, for like sports, for entertainment, like so far, it's just politics where the media gets smoked, but maybe we should lean into the media when it comes to politics or when it comes to entertaining rap beefs and someone ends up getting killed. Like, you don't think there are magazines writing articles about Pac and Big? You don't think there are radio stations talking about Pac and Big? So they're, they're feeding that fire, too, and they, they know were. exactly where it ends up. Of course they did. And that's why when you had people like C. Dolores Tucker and whoever else was speaking out against gangster rap at the time, mm -hmm. they were right. You know what I mean? Ooh. They were saying that, yo, it's going it's to lead to a culture of misogynistic behavior. It's going to lead to a culture of violence. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a bad influence. Yeah, they, they were right. But she you know never I mean? been in the so, club when that Yin Yang Twins comes on, bro. And that's a fact. She never been so, in the club. And that's a like, fact. She, and that's a fact. You know she don't what I'm and you can't, you want to, I want to so see the Lord's talking, you ain't out here in the streets. You don't know what it what goes down when these records drop. You don't that's know what these it. records mean to us on a cultural level. That's but I get it. it. But but as I as I'm older, Come I totally on. understand where she was coming from. Oh, so you're changing your with, ways. Um, I'm not changing my ways. Oh, yeah, I have changed my ways. I'm evolved. Of course, we all evolve. All I'm simply saying is when shit gets real, know that it's gotten real. That's it. It's all entertainment until it's not entertainment no more. Yeah, That's it. It's, it, it's really just that simple. It's all entertainment until it's not entertainment no more. It has not been entertainment with that young man since he got shot at mm. back in the day. It hasn't been entertainment since he got kidnapped. It hasn't been entertainment since the motherfucking feds came and picked up his whole operation. It hasn't been entertainment since he sat on that stand and told on every motherfucking body. To us, that shit is entertainment because we on the outside looking in. That shit really does look like a movie playing out. Yes. And not to them motherfuckers that's locked up in jail. Not to him when he didn't know whether he was going to live or die when he got kidnapped. You understand what I'm saying? Yo, I have a question for you. Do you think because reality shows have gotten so dramatic and so real, right? You're literally seeing abortions happen on a reality show, uh, fights. Maybe I don't think death has happened just yet, but like it's getting close. It's getting it's getting it's getting real, if you will. Do you think because we see this in reality shows all the time, we're kind of desensitized to a trial like this? Like this becomes just I another re reality I show in our life. Yeah, I think reality shows started it and I think um, social media elevated it to a, another level just because, you know, we see so, so much on social media. We're desensitized to so much shit. You know what I mean? And in and, 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 and a situation like that, it really does feel like we watched it play out on social media. Like that wasn't a TV play. 
That wasn't a a, a, a a podcast play. That wasn't a YouTube web show. That was some shit that we watched that young man, you know, show us the days of his lives mm. every day for like a whole year. We knew the whole crew. We knew what he was doing, what he was about. Everybody was intrigued. The funny part is so many people called it and knew exactly where, where that behavior was going to lead. It led to what we thought it was going to lead to, which was jail. You know, a lot of people said death as well. But it's not too late for that, uh, especially when you don't learn your lesson. Yeah. Especially when you don't learn to err in your ways. And that's the that's the that's the part I wish somebody would get across to him. It's like, bro, you you you're you're I don't want I don't know if blessed is the right word, but you are. Like you you skated out of a situation that could have been really, really, really bad for you. You 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 took a lot of people down in the process, but you skated out of a situation that's really bad for you. Now you got to target on you. You got to target on your children. You got to target on your mom, your whole family. And for what? Like, why come? You already you already had a target on them. Right. Why come home? And, why come home and set yourself on fire? Right. Like that's, that's, a, that's literally what you did. You put a you shot a flare in the sky, put a goddamn bat signal up. Yeah. And you motherfucking set yourself on fire and say, hey, hey, look at me. For what? For what? Like, for what? like I, I don't know, bro. I'm, I, I'm just glad I didn't grow up in that era. Where all that shit means so much to me, the the the, the IG viewership, and right? The, the, n- the number of fucking followers you got. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I'm old school. What that bag look like? Yeah, and all bags ain't good bags. What uh-huh. are you doing to get the bag? It's just it's just not the fact you making money. What are you doing to make that money? That's the shit that intrigues me. At right, forty one years old. Like I want to see some innovative shit i want to see some shit i ain't seen before i've seen this before and guess what guess what my brother it ain't worth it it's mm. not that shit ain't worth it do you think that you have more perspective on this because in your younger years you were a shit stir maybe not to the levels of six nine but you were not afraid of confrontation and saying things that would like get you into potential physical altercations on your platform I'm so, still not and still not but you probably don't do it as much you were probably not as antagonistic now like i feel like you've well, kind of evolved I, in the I, way I, that you interview whereas yeah, bef- i've never I, i've never wanted to be antagonistic that was never my thing like if you even listen to me back in the day i would always say that i admire Somebody like Angie Martinez, because Angie Martinez is able to make people comfortable in interviews. Right. That's a skill. That's a skill that I don't have. And the reason I didn't have that skill is because, you know, early on, if I'm just being me having these conversations and, you know, just as my father always said, the fastest way between two points is a straight line, just getting right to it. Yeah. And people are like, people are take, like, oh, did you just ask me that? Like they're taken aback by yeah. that. It's like now people are on guard when they come in. Yeah, well, it's not my it's not my fault. You're on guard and you're defensive. I don't think it's my fault. Maybe it is. I haven't really given it that much thought, but I've never wanted to be antagonistic. So I think over the years, people have just said, honestly, Charlamagne just he's just curious. He just asked what's, what's already out there. It's not like he's throwing anything new on us. He's just going to ask the shit that people already know. And now I think and I said this years ago, but it's even more so now. The age of transparency that we live in with social media. Now artists know I don't even got to go sit down and do an interview. I'll just tell these motherfuckers what's uh, going on. Yeah, you have you your own. You I'll have just, your own radio station. You have your own interview exactly, platform. Yeah, exactly. Like you, 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 you see what people are saying about you on social media. So now you can get on Instagram live and do your own fucking press conference. You can do your own interview. You don't need me but, to do that anymore. So, so therefore, the antagonistic label that shit kind of gone. But. But I will say this, I think because people have access to express their opinions on their own platforms, the art of interviewing will increase and escalate in importance. There was a time where if you just had a platform, you could just go, so what happened with this drama in the car? And then you could get the answer. People would watch it. Now... Because you can get information whenever you want and access to people whenever you want, I think the people who are actually gifted at interviewing and creating a different experience with the person they're interviewing, I think those interviews will be sought after like crazy and the generic interviews will completely die off.
I can see that. I mean, I've always like I've always been somebody who wanted to master the art of interviewing. I'm attracted to interviewers. I've always been attracted to Howard Stern, um, Angie Martinez, Wendy Williams, Diane Sawyer, Barbara Walters, Oprah Winfrey, Larry King. You know what I mean? Like right. I'm like I remember having a whole conversation with Larry King about interviews, and I'm like, wait, man, what's the, I said, Larry, what's the most important question you can ask in an interview? And Larry said, Why? Hmm. I said, Well, Larry, I said, Larry, because I want to know. I want to know. What's the he said, he said, he said no, He's why? Like, I answered you, why? It's like, why is the most important question that you can ask in an interview? Yeah. I truly believe that. Like, what is the what is the why of it all? Like, that's whenever you see me sitting down, having a conversation with somebody, always know that's my mission statement. I want to get to the why yeah. of it all. Like, that's it. And that's, by the way, that's what that's therapy, right? Yeah. When you sit down with your therapist, when you sit down with your therapist, your therapist wants to know the why. Well, she she gets you to what's the why of it all. Or he gets you to the what's the why of it all. Yeah. So you explain your shit. You explain your shit. You're getting all of this shit out. You're unpacking, you're unpacking, you're unpacking. And the therapist wants to know what's the why. Mm. So to go back to your the original conversation, that's all I'm, I'm like, I don't understand the why of none of this shit. Mm. And, and I don't think he understands the why of none of this shit. So being that he don't know no better, as a grown-ass adult, man, I got to know better. Cause that shit over there is sad, bro. I think I'm not gonna lie to you. I think he's aware of the why. I don't think so. Yeah. And if it, and if he is, it's not the why isn't worth it. If the why is that's money, fair. if the why is it, if the why is attention, if the why is clout, it ain't worth it. I'm telling yeah. you, it's not worth it. There's no, they, 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 you're not gonna sit here and tell me that if that young man had an opportunity to change some things in his life, he wouldn't change some things. Yeah, I think I think it's really coming down to something like. All right, I'm fucking 20 years old. I got tattoos all over my face and body. I'm basically unhirable. I have no education, but I'm a smart kid and I could find a lane to success and possibly millions of dollars. I'm going to lean the fuck into this because what else am I going to do? Like literally what other job could he have? He could be a fucking clown. I mean... To be a clown you think that the universal soul circus wouldn't hire him <laughs> come on bro the hip-hop clown have you seen the hip-hop clowns at the universal soul circus them shit is corny and outdated like he'd be perfect right so he's be gonna perfect. be a clown he's gonna be a clown for a living it could, it could be perfect yo a reality show i'm sure that's coming down i'm sure that's coming down the pipeline you can do a reality show like the yeah, the kid is charismatic. He's funny. There's other shit that he could do. Right. Other th other than this shit. Like, right. I, it's like, why? It's like, bro, why? Like, like, why? Why? Why are you? Why are you coming right back fucking with people? Mm. Like, like it's, it's whack, man. And then I'm telling you, jealousy plus envy on top of people not fucking with him because of what he did, you know, and him. They don't think he's honorable. That shit is a bad combination. Because guess what? When I see um, him say things like, "Yo, you jealous of my numbers?" He's right. Yeah. And jealous motherfuckers, on top of the fact they already don't fuck with you because mm. of what you did, jealousy, envy, and that combination, bruh. Woof. And imagine being in prison. Imagine being one of the guys that's in prison because of him. And you see him out here just taunting motherfuckers and, you know, bragging about this shit, like literally bragging about what you did. You're not going to want some revenge. Hmm. I don't think y'all understand how this shit works. I really don't. I don't think y'all understand how a person in jail's mind state works. I fuck think the, fuck, fuck the rappers on the street. I'm yeah. in jail for the next 15, 20 years, 25 years because of you. And you out here just like. Bro, you're calling in your favors. You like, like, man, look, I mean, I can't do anything for you right now, but bro, if you can't, if you can, please, please. And by the way, it's people still on the street that love those people that's in jail. Mm. It's people on the street that love those guys that's in prison. You fucked up some of their meal tickets. And now you out here just gloating this shit? Oh, man. Do you think, do you think that oh, most people, 
you think most people think they're that like street justice doesn't happen because you see guys like George Zimmerman walking around unscathed still. So do you think there's this idea amongst the 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 regular population that is not involved in like the super hood shit that it's like, oh, that's all talk. Nobody really gets got because if they were going to get got, why wouldn't they go after these like horrible racists and super villains that are just walking the streets today? Why don't they go after some KKK guys? Like, why don't they go after all these people they say they hate? I agree with you. That's a great point. And I can't wait till they start doing that. But um, for now, street justice happens in the street every goddamn day. Right. Uh, all right. It's, it's gang members popping gang members every goddamn day. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's people popping informants every goddamn day. You know what I mean? I just right. saw a young man get shot in Brooklyn this week. Get shot and killed in Brooklyn. And the headline was like, they're investigating if it was in connection to, you know, rap or pop smoke or some shit like that. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yo, this shit happens all the time. And all it takes is opportunity. That's it. As right. simple as that. Like, uh, like, simple as that. Like, it's literally just that simple. And I just don't understand why, bro. Mm. Like, that's what I really don't. I don't understand the why of it all. Because I know that if that was me and I was in that situation and I did something like that that caused a bunch of people to go to jail and I came home, I don't even think I'd live in America. Mm. I really don't. I'd probably go live in London. Straight up, uh, like, I don't know. Somewhere, I'd go live somewhere else. I don't think I would live here. Mm. And I damn sure, I damn sure wouldn't be in Long Island in a fucking apartment, apartment complex. complex or some <laughs> shit with a shared goddamn community pool. Yeah. The fuck? I don't, I don't give a fuck about how big your stack of money is when you share a pool. <laughs> the fuck is up with you, bro? Uh, you share, and, and, and you're not even aware of your surroundings. You're not even paying enough attention to see that motherfuckers around you or filming you. Yeah. Bro. That shit's fucked up, man. Bad that look. Sad. <clears throat> that shit is sad. Bad that look, you very, think? Very, very sad. A bad look for what? You think it's a bad look to be in that situation? Uh, yes. <laughs> you don't think so? Yeah, I think so. I think it's. I thought he was like put there on purpose. Like I thought the court chose not him. My assumption is if he's being moved, they have control of the destinations where he's being held. Well, he's not even he's not even in fucking uh, witness protection. He's not in that kind of he's not in, he's not in that type of shit. He's not an informant no more. Right. <clears throat> they, they use him already. Yeah. He's out here. Yeah. He's on his own. Yeah. Like what the fuck? So then why like, do they say they moved him? Who's they? <clears throat> I don't know who they was. Maybe it's his team. I don't fucking he's know. He's on house I, arrest, I, I, but that's for I, his house. That's weird, right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's for PO parole officer. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know. If he but if he if he is still if the if the government moved him, then that means he's still an actor. Yeah, that's there. what it seems more like for me. I, if the government is still invested in his safety, then he's still probably working with them in some regard. Maybe. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. All I know is that shit ain't going well. Anyway, I saw an amazing show, man. This is uh, oh, what, hold on. Oh, do, do you do you want do, that was a good start? Shit, Andrew, make me talk about some shit I don't want to talk about. Yeah. But listen, do, do you want you want to you want to do this mid roll and then come back and do a uh, positively brilliant? What a fucking idiot! Yes, I have a positively brilliant for you. Okay, you have let's to get this. you have to watch. Let's do the mid roll, but you have to watch this show. All right, um, let's let's take a pause. All right. Take a deep breath. <laughs> now, uh, turn your dream into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and more, Squarespace is the tool for you. With beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself, okay? Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online, and analytics help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out the box, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple. And you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people, from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms that aren't open yet, but they will be this weekend to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot, offer code idiot. Now, let's get into Positively brilliant or what a fucking idiot. Even though uh, we could have started off the show with what a fucking idiot. That's how, I, by the way, that's what that was. 
So we're still continuing it. Done. So now we do Positively some, Brilliant. Give me some brilliant shows. The show is called 90 Day Fiance Before They Met. Have you heard of this show? It's on TLC, I've, I've, I believe. I've heard of it, yes. This is the most scintillating reality show I have ever seen in my entire fucking life. Why? So the fiance shit is basically long distance relationships. These people have met on websites, on Facebook or like mail order bride dating apps. So it's like some chick in Russia or the Ukraine or whatever. And then they meet them for the first time and they spend two weeks with them and they're supposed to propose to them at the end of the two weeks. Okay. There's some guy who like he has no neck and he's dating this Asian girl and like the Asian girl, you think she can't really speak English, but she can. She's in Vietnam. I mean, this shit is just so crazy. He goes to Vietnam to see her. Another guy, is 60 years old, has a girlfriend for seven years in Russia that, or no, in Ukraine that he's never met. And he's gone to Russia four, four times to meet her. And it just keeps on messing up. She, he just keeps on not being able to see her in the Ukraine. And then miraculously at the end of this episode, they actually kind of link up and then it stops. I mean... There's these lesbians. Their story's kind of boring. But, like, th the thing is unbelievable. You can't believe the relationships that these people are actually dedicating time in their lives to be a part of. It's cat. It's catfish, but, like, it actually ends up being someone that they get into a relationship with. Really? Yeah, dude. It is, it is, it's just mind-boggling. Like, to me, it's like it has to be scripted. It's that crazy that it has I mean, to. Well, well, most reality shows are scripted, though. Right. I just don't understand yeah. how you script the love portion of it before the show starts. In order for them to be on the show, they have to be engaging with each other for a couple of years and consider, or like a year at least, and consider themselves boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, they, they probably do casting calls. They probably say, yo, have you been engaged for a couple of years? We'd and like you never met you. Your, your girlfriend or boyfriend. Hold on. Wait a minute. Maybe I missed that part. So they're engaged with people they never met? Oh, this is before they get engaged. There is a show, which is 90 Day Fiance, where they get, I guess, engaged. What is it? They get engaged, and then the U.S. laws, they have 90 days to actually get married. So there's another show. This is the show that's before the main show. The main show is you just get engaged, and you have 90 days to get married. But you get engaged to the person you haven't even met. You've just been talking on the internet. So this is the show where they go for two weeks to go see the person that they're about to propose to that they never fucking met. I mean, you have the most... Bonafide psychopaths in the world on this show. Falling in love with people they've never fucking met, never met their family. Most of them barely even speak English. The guy was texting this girl in Russia on a dating app for seven years. What the fuck? Oh, no, Ukraine, not Russia. I mean, this you have to watch it. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I a, who I have a feeling your girlfriend made you watch this show. 100%. 100 percent 100 percent it's but we it's have. one of the few things that she's made me do that i've enjoyed okay <laughs> like and she didn't make Bruh. me do it it was on while she was making dinner and i was like what is this shit and i saw this little guy he's like 411 he looks like a thumb and he has no neck whatsoever right it's just shoulders and his head is on top of the neck and he's dating this vietnamese or filipino girl and it is so funny their relationship he makes All her right. shave her legs she don't shave her legs he makes her shave him. He like gives her a ring. A ring, a ring. What? <laughs> Bro, she doesn't shave her legs and he hands her a razor. What you're, what you're, what you're witnessing right now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, sitting there listening to the Brand Idiots podcast, <laughs> is you're listening to the after effects of there being no sports uh, and us being quarantined for too much. That's a okay, fact. Andrew, Andrew Schultz is watching 90 Day Fiance. And I know this, this show doesn't come on on a Sunday night. Oh, Does it? bro, I'm watching them on demand, dog. I went through the whole season. I polished <laughs> off the whole season last night. Are you kidding me? You think I'm waiting, bro? I watched <laughs> six episodes straight last night. Oh, my God. NBA, come back. Nah, we need it. Yo, real talk. Basketball <laughs> players don't get paid enough. They don't get paid enough, bro. It's amazing what they do for us. Dog, they don't get paid enough. Yo, Yo I, saw some, I saw somebody today. I think it was Jay Wynn. I don't know who it was. The way they were talking about NBA players was like they were essential workers. Are they not? <laughs> dog? They was. They was like, oh, it was a. Uh, it was Dwayne. Uh, what's the fighter name? DC. Oh, uh, uh, Cormier. Daniel Cormier. Yeah, yes, Daniel yeah, Cormier yeah, yeah. was like, what is that? look, man. He said, look, America needs sports, <laughs> especially, especially right now. 
<laughs> yes, we do. Because Andrew's watching 90 Day Fiance. Bro, I heard it's a good show, though. I heard it's a good show. Bro, it might be it might be better than most sports, Doc. It really might be better than most sports. I'm not going to lie, dude. It's oh my God. the passion, the love. You know what I mean? The physicality. I'm telling you, man, they found the craziest people on the planet. They found the craziest people on the planet. This one guy goes all the way to fucking Russia. I think it's Russia. Proposes to this girl. And she says no, and he's still got to hang out with her for a couple of days. And bro, he is so salty about it. <laughs> do they show? So do, do they fuck? Do they show them fucking at least? They like elude to them fucking. Okay, okay. You know they're like, yeah, I guess we did it or we didn't. I mean, it is so funny, bro. These two lesbians bickering all the time, like throwing plates and shit. Ugh. It just sound like love and hip hop, bro. It's it is kind of like. It's like white retard love and hip hop. <laughs> that's what it is. If you could have white retard love and hip hop, that's what 90 Day Fiance is. So you recommending it clearly? Oh my God. If you need something to watch, because we've watched everything. Everybody's watched everything. Let's be honest. I mean, yeah. That's why you got motherfuckers like Disney Plus. Uh, Dropping the Mando. What's the Mando? The Mandalorian, aren't they coming out with a new season soon or some shit? Oh no, they got they putting Hamilton out. Hamilton was supposed to come out in movie theaters next year. They moved that shit up Ooh. to July of this year. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Let me throw something at you. Um now that so many people are doing work from home, right? I'm talking about people with regular jobs. My girl has a, a work from home situation, and she can do everything that she does from home, right? Mm -hmm. do you think let's say let's assume that businesses go you know what let's just continue this work from home thing the output has been great you guys have been doing all your work you don't have to come in the office if you don't want to do you think you see groups of friends start going yo if we got to work from home y'all want to just spend the winter in jackson hole or you want to go to tahiti for the winter as long as we have the wi-fi do you think you see groups of people start to uh go to like I don't know, like do like work travel where they just absolutely that's a possibility, right? Absolutely. I saw Twitter. I saw Jack Dorsey, which I thought was brilliant. I saw Jack Dorsey say um, all my employees can work from home if they want to. You know why? Because they've had too much and realized, shit, we don't need this fucking building. Uh, we spending all this money on rent and shit for what? All we need is probably a little small office yeah. just for us two, the CEOs, and we can get rid of all this shit. Yeah. That's going to be the thing. I, I can see all of these companies getting rid of all their brick and mortar shit. This whole quarantine has taught us it's all about trimming effect. Mm. Essential is the key word. Mm. Essential is the word of this quarantine. Mm. What is essential? What do you absolutely fucking need to do what it is you do, Andrew? What is it? Tell me. Uh, I need the studio. Do you need the studio? I or do you enjoy having the studio? I think it's a need. And I think that... Okay. Like, I think that the content is better. I think that you and I have been doing this for five years. So it's we have a chemistry that we can like do things over the phone or over Skype or Zoom or whatever we're using right now. That being said, it's more fun when we do it in person. Because you play off someone's yeah, emotions. like, and, and I think it's better. I think we're rare and we've been doing it so long where we can keep it close to the level where it is. But I don't think it's as good. So I think for our business, in order to have that competitive advantage where we're 10% better than the, the opposition or our competition or 20% better, I think having that in-person thing is valuable. But if we're doing office jobs, yo, like, or if we're doing uh, work that has to do around the show, psh, work from home, bro. No, I agree with you. I like being, I love being in Breakfast Club Studio. I love being in the studio with you. It's a different type of energy. Because it's the nature of what um, we do. It's connecting. It's communicating. Yes. But. Go. All we need is this goddamn microphone and the zoom, 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 or mixer. Or so. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. We just, these are really the essentials. I get what you're saying. Though. I totally, and I totally agree with you. But essentials, man, I'm telling you, when this shit is over, you're gonna, it's gonna be hard for you to go back to all the extra shit. It's gonna be hard. It's just certain things that we've done without for the past couple of months. Go that on that. What do you mean? What do you mean go on the, uh, it's gonna be hard to go back to the extra? What do you mean? It's that? gonna be hard to go back to the extra. It's gonna be hard to like, I don't fucking know. Um, say you need all of these clothes or these sneakers. Are you 
have to attend this event or you have to get on a plane to go to L.A. for this meeting or you 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 have to fucking eat at this restaurant. Like it's just going to be a lot of things that I think we will be accustomed to that change everything. Like, yo, if they started putting if Black <laughs> Widow and all of that shit I wanted to see this spring had came on fucking Disney Plus. I don't a see a reason to leave the house. I really don't it's like my, my 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 next crib that I move into is probably going to be like I'm going to make that crib. I mean, I try to do that here now, but I'm going to make that crib so comfortable because th- this two months has shown me everything I need, especially when you get older, has to be right there in that fucking house. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, has to, it has to be right there in that fucking house. Mm-hmm. You know what? That's really interesting. This is a cool trial run for the rest of your life like absolutely you know what i'm saying like retirement who's that where the yeah. fuck oh yeah. shit where came from? i don't even know where i came from oh shit this wax is on yo taylor you gotta tell us when you're doing this shit because because we gotta be able to get them on okay That's there we right. go i don't know nothing i don't even know what's going on i just hear y'all talking what up what up bro word, my brother Man, blessings, man. Now, oh, Wax, just- I've seen you. You were on a boat. You were fishing. Yes. Yeah, man. Chilling, enjoying life out here. That's why when you're talking about it's going to be hard to go back to the norm, I'm like, yeah. what the hell? I I'm do this just for you. breakfast. I eat breakfast on a boat. Yeah, I eat dinner dog. on a boat. Man, Yo, that was crazy. In the morning. When you just dipped your head into the water and came out with a fish, bro. That? that was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen, bro. Listen, you got to put peanut butter in your mouth. <laughs> you put your head in the water. You spit it out with a fish coming. You grab them shit. <laughs> what? Listen, by the way, Wax is, Wax is the only person in the world who would go quarantine in fucking Florida. If you're, not from, if, you're, if, if you're not from Florida, there's no reason to be in Florida right now. No, I listen, re- listen, go to go to uh, Sky Blue Reynolds. Man, I got a boat company out here, man. I'm actually joining and actually making money at the same time. That's why one of the good reasons why I'm out here. Is that why your headphones like, are blue? Yes, this is my shorty studio. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Florida and turned crip? <laughs> I ain't turned crip. I ain't turned nothing but a boat guy. I love it, man. It's, it's, it's amazing. I can't even believe it. And I and I built it with my hands. It's crazy. That's crazy. Somebody sent me a, 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 a video this morning and they said, oh, my God, Wax is in love. He's on TikTok. I'm not and on I said, TikTok. you're a fucking liar. I got the video. And I said, and I said, and I said, oh, I've seen this video already. And they just yeah. put a bunch of laughing emojis. And they was like, I can't believe he's really in love. Yeah, yo, it's a great thing, man. I can't believe it, man. You've been with me for how long? You know what time? You see the life that I used to live. And I say that how many how many stories that we had on Brilliant Idiots already? It's like it's crazy. I can't believe it. Really in love. Bro, it's one day at a time. This thing actually really works. You know, this is beautiful. I'm so happy. And you sound great. What do the women that you used to smash? say to you like all the women that tried to lock you down um, what they, what, I, think, I know you're getting some crazy messages ah man you know man just pray for me you know what i'm saying just pray for me but some of them be surprisingly the ones that i that really i thought like we guess love me they giving blessings they was like i know this is the man that you was and if you can make this happy i like to see you happy that's like bullshit. people who genuinely love you they, they'd be like you know what they probably hurting inside you believe that of course I don't. Who believes oh, women? They all full like, of shit. Wow. <laughs> Most of them. Wow. Most Whoa. of them are full of shit, y'all. I don't know. Whoa. Oh, wax. Is men is are men hoes? Say again? No. Are men hoes? Are nah. men hoes? No, nah, okay. dude. I don't know what you're talking okay. about. You talking about two you, faithful men. Why are you men? doing all this generalizing? Yes. Nah, because they I, are. Know, I know I know because yeah, see, Taylor, there you, go. And you can't a lot of talk. I'm gonna say, listen, she gotta say, take that, take that. Stop that. No, and, um, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Taylor, you sound chubby, yo, chill. <laughs> no, no, but for real, Taylor, Taylor, the way that we're recording this, whenever you talk, it goes to your screen, but nothing's on your uh, screen. So it's just a blank thing. Okay. It, so, so unless you so unless you're gonna show them edges. <laughs> all right. Maybe that's why it's a blank screen. Edges. Maybe it's them edges taking up the entire camera. That's why she don't want she don't want people to see her. Is that what's going on? I'm doing my hair. Oh, right no, now. she's about to put up. She's about to put up. Don't do it. She said she's doing her hair right now. Let me see. <laughs> no. Nope. Let me see. Taylor nope. is blank. It's not showing. Taylor, see? you are fucking up this podcast see? in a way. Yeah, and I don't even know what I was saying. What was I saying? 
<laughs> oh, oh you I was mean, saying, I was saying, if girls could call us hoes. Only way a guy could be a hoe if a lot of girls try to holler at him. Right. And these girls got boyfriends, so come on. That's why I, I call them and say they all lie. Yo, have you smoked less weed, bro? Uh, nah, I'm, I'm out here blowing down, man. Cause you seem way more like way more sharp. I mean, about? you seem <laughs> on the boat. Listen, I'm on the boat right now. My, right now, I'm I, I'm actually on the boat still. No, but you're my like brain quick. is on the boat. Your brain, brain is firing is like everything. Usually, you're in like a haze, right? And now you yeah. look like a like a. It's like a sunny day, man. What's going on? Yo, Something's God different, bless, bro. Man. God bless me. Something's man. different. Saying, what do you think it are is? You saying, are you saying Caesar has evolved? Say what? Is this, Caesar has evolved. Caesar has evolved. I don't know what that is. Who is that? Caesar, Caesar has evolved. This is the third movie, baby. Caesar what's, ready what's to take Caesar? over. I don't know what that is. Oh, watch it tonight. Shit. I'm going to text it to you. I'm going to text you the movie to watch tonight. You'll get it. Okay. Yeah. Right. No, so, so when you proposing, when you going to propose? I ain't going to lie to you. I mean, um, I don't know. Again, I'm taking every one day at a time. You know what I'm saying? We we trying certain things out. You know, like what? To see it, like, you know, put, getting a boat company together, getting certain things together to try to see if those things could work out. If I can have a good partner first and then the relationship co- stuff comes with it. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't try to I don't try to work on a relationship. I try to work on other things and the relationship things come with it. What, 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 makes you, what, what makes you so happy about her? Like, I mean, what, 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 why does she um, make you so happy? You know, we're, on the same, we're on the same page. You know, a lot of times it's like I stopped dealing with other girls because they start liking me more than they like their, their company and their their vision and the things that they're going after. She go hard for hers. You know what I'm saying? I respect that. I, I, I fell in love with her the way she is, not a girl, you know what I'm saying? I feel love like how she moved and how she handled her business and so stuff. Basically, like that. you're saying this is the first woman you ever dated who had a job? No, not at all. Not at all. And the, the thing is, everybody else had jobs. She the one who don't got a job. So, so then how her, is she going her, hard on her hers hustle. if she don't got a it's job? It's her hustle. It's her hustle. She know how to make things happen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you've dated some hustlers before. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know, hold on, hold on. I, I, I know, so, hold on. I know I a few know of them. We got to go back. Listen. We got to go back. We got to go back. Go ahead. You said you fell in love with her and her hustle. Yes. And right. Other things too. Other things too. How she take care of me. She hold me down. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Of but course. I'm, not, I'm not going to say that other girls haven't hold me down. I'm not going to say I had other hustlers. It's okay. But I had so many other girls because one was a hustler. One washed clothes better. One fed me better. One I could talk to or go to the hood. Other one I go to church and go see my mama. I had like 20 different girls to make equal to this one. Right. You're making excuses. You love her. Now we said that already. What are you trying I mean, to say? You love her. And, and he he lining know. me up. He lining me up. What, <laughs> I want to know. What you got? You already see, you said TikTok first. You lining you me up. Her. Andrew, you what's going her. on? Nothing. You love her. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm happy that you're in love. It don't Bless. have nothing to do. Bless. It don't have nothing to do with none of that shit. When you Peace. got the one, you just know she the one. It just is what it is. And I, you, love your, you love your girl, right? I Show? love yes. my girl, but I've never experienced such a transition as we're experiencing right now. Wax is speaking in complete sentences for the first time in my entire <laughs> relationship with him as a friend. Caesar, baby! I'm t- dude, Caesar, something's man. going I'm, on. I'm chilling. Something I'm chilling. is going on right now. I need to know what it is. I need to know what this girl is doing to truly make you the man you could have always been. Bro, um, I was always the guy. I always, you know, did certain things, but I always been behind the scenes and out the way. I've been had a lot of things going on always. I just stayed out the way. I don't I never try to Wax. Like, exploit myself or anything Wax. like that. By the you fall, he'll be speak speaking Spanish. English now. <laughs> I do know Spanish right now. I know some Spanish. Ooh, Give us some Dominican, Spanish. Dominican so, speak Spanish. Right? Como estas? Okay. Yo, I, I, I even got I even got a I even got a Spanish song. Okay, go. I made up. Go. What what is it? Damn that nigga dick big as hell, but Spanish. No, <laughs> what the hell wrong with you? This hey Alex, crazy. how you say damn that nigga, nigga dick big as hell hey, in Spanish? Don't even Nick play out. around with this. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on drugs? <laughs> Who's on drugs? <laughs> What's the Spanish song you got? Let me hear it. Uh oh, uh, uh Mucho de Amo, de Amo Mucho. So when you say mucho de Yo, amo, son, that's this shit. This shit. This shit. When you say son, mucho de amo, it. that really means much Yo, love. Son, stop but it. it's like love much. Son, so when it. I say it, so when I say come, when I say mucho de amo, uh, and somebody in Spanish automatically gonna say, Te amo oh mucho. My God. You know what I'm saying? They automatically gonna say it. 
Black women. Hey. Black women, I know why y'all hate us niggas sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has been with so many black women in his whole life and was acting like he didn't even understand y'all. Looking y'all in the eye and saying, I don't know nothing. I don't know now, nothing. Now, now my Dominican sister got him singing, singing about being in love. <laughs> Mucho dinero. Mucho te amo. Mucho te amo. Much amo. Much love. Amo mucho. Love me much. <laughs> what the fuck, yo? This is so crazy. Te amo oh, mucho. <laughs> Dude, oh, wax. I've never man. seen it. Oh, Charlemagne, is this new to you? I haven't seen it either. I'm Brand, telling you, this, 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 So your entire no, relationship with, uh, your entire friendship with wax, You've never seen him be this hyper, be this like only, present. Only two, uh, only two other girls. Come on, bro. Um, but 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 he never would commit to either one. He would never yeah, be like sucks. he would never be like I want to be with her. He would be like Nah, I can't be with her because of this reason. And the other yeah, one, the other one, something. other one, he just shitted on because she was white and he just didn't stop, understand man. That. Why you doing so this, I guess, man? I guess it because I guess like the the first girl I knew he loved was black. The second one was white. So I guess he found him a nice contrast. He in got the that middle. middle ground, bro. Nice little brown. You know what I'm saying? I ain't yeah. think of that. Nice, That's kind nice of smart. Por- nice Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nice, nice, nice Afro Latino. Bees all the time. Yeah, my bonus. I know yeah, how to say be- toast on us. Yeah, what the fuck you is just that? said it. <laughs> we know you know. You just Yo, said say it. Say toast on us. Toast on us. What is that? What does that mean? It's a um. It's like a, a a big ass fucking banana that you like cut in half and then you like put like it's like bread but plantains like bread. Damn, like that nigga t- So you'd be like, damn, that nigga's the tone is big as hell. <laughs> <laughs> damn, that nigga's the tone is big as hell. That's what you say? <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with this song. He's up to something, I'm telling you. He's boiling. You know how you boil no, water no, for grits? No, no, no. I'm He's happy. Boiling. I'm, sorry. I'm happy. I knew, right, shit had, I knew shit had changed when we double dated. When we double dated, yes. I was like, wow. Bro, bro. You guys never seen dated? that before. Where'd you guys yeah. go? We went to Horrible Decisions Horrible live, live, live show. Podcast. Yeah. Okay. That was months ago, before yeah, Corona, chilling. of course. It was, was cool, that? man. I mean, I, I think I liked her because we was friends first. It was more of not even trying to do this. Like, we still not trying. I'm not trying to. Like, she's cool. I, I, I want to see her. I, I like the way she do business. I could sit down and talk to her about a business and how to make it grow. And we like, I things how we think it'd be like, that's going to work. And things is working. Can you, so why, <clears throat> can you uh, introduce her to us? Can we see... Is she we just around? Did, we just did a podcast together. I was on yeah, a podcast we this did. week. Well, I hey, mean baby. to the I mean to the brilliant idiots listeners, not oh. me personally. Can we come here, baby? Um, yeah, she's cool. You know what I'm saying? She knows she's gonna be on camera. Uh, she probably don't know you wanna be on camera. Baby, you wanna be on camera real quick? You wanna be you wanna <laughs> say be hello to the to people? The quarantine life. Yeah, say she's hi real quick. Life. Just say hi, baby. Hey. Can you hear us or not? Call her. Hold on, hold on. She got you. Oh, Carla got a whole studio. Yo, Carla. Bias. That's what I'm saying. She think different, man. Now, can you hear us, Carla? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. He referred to you as uh, Dominican, and we had to correct him. No, <laughs> she hear me. <laughs> I can hear him. I'm, I'm oh, okay. Still. Okay. <laughs> Yo, Carla. <laughs> Carla. I've never seen Wax so present, so on point, so articulate, so quick in my entire friendship with Wax. Is this a result of your guys' relationship? Have you unearthed a different part of Wax? Absolutely. Give me all the credit. I do. <laughs> I do. I'm not giving nobody else the credit. I've seen it. I know the difference. <laughs> I mean, it's been there all along. Like I could see it in the friendship. It's just now like, kind of just let it out for whatever reason. Is he, drinking tea? Hmm? Is he drinking, drinking tea? Is he drinking tea? Fucking tea, bro. He's drinking tea. Yes. Yeah, I drink tea. Wow. Bro, come tea. on, bro. What's going on? Wow. Like this. I don't know what you do. Waxed in a sunken place. <laughs> he really is, dog. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, bro, listen. Shit. Tea. Hey, listen, tea. if I am, if y'all see me about to harm myself, do some dumb shit, y'all, can, y'all gotta come get me, yeah? I'm gonna tell you something. I think this is what I listen. I hope you and Carla work out, but it's a part of me, just a small part. I want Carla to break your heart, just because of all the hearts you broke. 
Just because no, all but, the hearts you broke. But you know what? Just because all, all the hearts you broke. Have up. you, have you up. prayed for repentance? Have you, have you prayed for repentance for all the hearts you broke? All every day, every time. You Literally. apologize on the show. I apologize. Have, Listen, I apologize so much. She tell me to stop apologizing to these hoes. Have you, you have, to these hoes? Did, did, <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you pray for a Carla? Did you pray for a good woman? Yes. I told God uh, that I am ready. And uh, I told him this way before, though. I just didn't know when it's going to come. This is, again, we sometimes like she pour her pants down and I'd be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, we cool. Like, what the fuck are we doing? It's like, what? I don't know I, what's I don't going even, on. <laughs> I really don't I'll know just, what's going like, on. I and I just got like, real confused. Cool. I don't even like look at her like wax. Wax, you need to, like, yo, this Carla, you need, no, 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 back up. You need to explain what happens when she pulls her pants down. What is happening? I what? laugh. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Why'd you like, laugh? We're not supposed to be doing this. Carla, Carla what you do you got Carla, down there, yo? Hold on. Carla, you gaining that much weight during quarantine? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why did she do this? Carla, what is happening when them pants come no, down, yo? No. What the fuck? Carla. Yeah. Carla, what's happening when the pants come down that, that wax just starts Nothing. giggling? We pray. We pray. And are Why you your laughing? You gotta be down to pray. <laughs> this is certain certain tactics, man. Sometimes you gotta put your feet in the water and pray, pull your pants down and pray. Have you prayed in every style? I don't think you prayed in every style. I haven't prayed I, in doggy only style. Pray one way. I thought that was the only style. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know there were various positions to prayer. No, nah, I'm just saying you just do it. Like put garlic in your socks and pray. Put your feet in water and pray. Like have water hitting your face when you pray. Go Bro, to a star at night and pray. All like, this shit. See which one's going to work. The old wax is coming back. Like, this is refreshing. Okay, hey, good. Hey, those first, <laughs> those, those first two sound like. Those first two sound like Dominican recipes, bro. Put garlic <laughs> in the fucking just fuse and water. Put garlic in your side. <laughs> this is how you keep Dominican away shit. vampire. <laughs> I'm getting rid of all the garlic in this fucking house. No, no, no. Good, good. I'm happy for y'all, though. I really am. This is amazing. I've never yes. seen wax like this ever in my life. I mean, fucking it's, it's impressive. I am, I am truly sleep. impressed. He sleeps like all the time now, like all night. You yes. sleep through the night wax? Hey, yeah. has he been able to orgasm? Because he used to say that he couldn't come. Very good question, Andrew. So has he Very been a good question? Were you the one to get the come out of his balls? He doesn't have blue balls anymore. Oh! Hey! Wax, you been nutting? You been nutting, Wax? Wax, you I out here nutting, bro? I gave it to her, bro. man. I gave it to her, man. You know, I never like giving it to nobody. I feel like the fuck I'm giving it to you for. Yeah. That's why he in love. Now, that yeah. Carla... That first one that he let go, was it like power washing? <laughs> like what? Is that how you clean the boat? <laughs> it's like a volcano eruption. Just That's it. Oh. That shit probably took some freckles off your back. From? Now, Carla, do you go through his phone? I don't know. Really? He doesn't give me... You know when you go when a woman goes through a man's phone, there's something telling you to go through that phone. Yes. Yeah. There's he's wax. That, huh? He's wax. Yeah. Yeah, but I've always, I've seen his phone before, so it's not like he was. I, I knew what was in his phone before, and it was just like I never felt that I couldn't trust him when we decided really? to do this. Never. Like really? he never gave me the phone. Sits there. He doesn't turn the phone around. Mm -hmm. Um, if he's on it, he doesn't like close it. I can see whatever's going on. And if a girl hits him up, he lets me know. Like, yeah. there's a, this girl hit me up. But she sent pussy pics. I saw your pussy, girl. Man, she's going to so, see all your pussies in your titties. So, y'all send her. So, what happens it. when they send the pics? Do you get upset? Do you get jealous? You know, girls trying to give me some pussy. Why not? What the fuck? Wait, what? No, no, no niggas want to try to fuck her. She'd be always trying to do sexy pictures and shit. I'm like, I do not do sexy shit pictures. Is. And then, motherfuckers, you tell them, oh, I, I'm doing this. Like, people don't see that you're a bum bitch. They're going to be like, you know what I'm saying? I want to holler or I want to I do that. So, everybody always gonna try to. Gonna, somebody gonna try. And don't get me wrong, I was the psycho bitch. That I'm the one that like fought niggas, and I was She's going through bad. the phone, and I was going through the emails and hacking it all. I don't feel the need to. Really? Not at all. But I didn't think this was possible though. Me neither. You didn't think what was possible? Being in love. Being in love to the point where you trust them, where yeah. you don't want to go through their phone. I thought it was normal, and I feel like 
we were we've been we were raised thinking that it was normal to go through somebody's phone, that it was normal to fight them, that it was normal yeah. to hack into their emails, and it's not. It's you're able to do it if you really trust and love that person, but <laughs> they minute. have to do that. Hold on, you. you were raised that way, like in in a Puerto Rican yeah. household. Oh, Girls is ready to go get it. But like, what happens? Does your mom like teach you how to make like uh, you know rice and beans, and then like teach you how to get an email password? Like, how does it how does it work? How does that um, basically <laughs> tracking device? For me, it was very much so like that. It was like my dad taught me how to fight, and my mom showed me how to stalk my dad's bitches. <laughs> so, I started at twelve, right? Like young. So I know how to do it. I, I'm, I was fucked up. Come here, hija. This is how you hack a Facebook. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Facebook. Okay, Facebook. get it right. Hey, Facebook. 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 <laughs> hey, no, I mean that's 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 admirable that y'all both uh trust each other. Yeah, especially being that you was Wax's friend before this, so, so you, you know, know. who he was. Yeah, yeah. you he knew all the fuck shit. So he didn't come to me in a relationship like you know how you always show your best foot forward those first six months or nah, whatever. I gave my worst foot forward. I already knew what he was about. Yeah. I already knew who he was. So you can't first be lying to me now. Yeah. How did he charm you? How did he get you? How did he get you to remove him from the friend zone? When did you first go? Oh, I want to see that guy's penis. Ass girl. You shut the fuck up. Nasty ass girl. <laughs> what she happened? got me one night, bro. What happened? You wanted it. I ain't wanted it. Wow. I thought we was cool. Me too. (laughs) Me too. Tell me your experience, Wax. Tell me your story. (laughs) Share your story. It's not a me too story. It's kind of like, listen, we went to, I went, I was golfing. Remember I was golfing a lot. I was going to the pier and I was golfing and I told her I was golfing. So she come and keep on trying to give me the drink. And I'm like, nah, nah, she's shoving a straw in my mouth. Bullshit. Then we go bowling. She going between my legs inside the bowl and alley, and I'm like, it was no room. It was, yeah. it was wow. Tight. Yeah, what you mean going next between you your know, legs? Yes, and this next thing you know, she sitting, she putting the liquor in my mouth again. Boom. No one I got to drive. I'm like, I don't drink, so it's gonna fuck me up. She got to a club. She got us into a club. She giving me drinks all night. Everybody in that club knew we was fucking, but me. <laughs> I didn't know either. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only person who knew I was fucking that night. No, it's true. That's the manager was funny. like the next day, oh, I thought you guys were dating already. I'm like, hell no. Now, yeah, she's all over me. Carla, so you Carla, went. Carla, where did you take your victim after the club? <laughs> Come on. So, <laughs> Oh, well, watch this story. Okay, what happened was, so he was taking me back to the Bronx, which I, does he even know still this was yes. that, you dropped, that you dropped him off to the Bronx one time? Do you remember that? That's when we were still high. That's where you used to be at? Remember you dropped me off at the Bronx? Yeah, like, and I, what the and fuck I, you doing out here? All the time. I was like, why the fuck are you in the Bronx? <laughs> Like, why? <laughs> this motherfucker. Yo, I'd be paranoid as fuck if we saw a truck like yours and be like, oh, fuck, walk the other way, walk the other way. He's waiting to see what he's going to come up with. Like, and you know what used to be so funny? Back around the corner. I used to be saying, whoever this is is Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> I used to always be saying that. I'd be like, I don't know who the fuck you in there with, but I guarantee you they're they Latino of some sort. <laughs> I mean, the odds oh, are you your on your side with that one. <laughs> Yo, it's just so right. unbelievable. I tell the story. So she brought me upstairs, right? So she was like, come upstairs. I know you're hungry. Three, three o'clock in the morning. Come upstairs. I know you're hungry, right? And so I was like, everywhere. fuck it. I'm going to go upstairs to eat. I went upstairs. She made me some, what is it, uh, Alfredo? I, I didn't make you anything. I what had cooked earlier in that day. And we were looking for food. The pizza spot was like packed. So I was like, I got food at home. You got to drop us off at home anyway. Okay. So ah. come upstairs and eat. I had cooked earlier. Three o'clock in the morning. Come upstairs and eat Alfredo, shrimp Alfredo. It was rice and beans, actually. Rice and salmon. beans. And, and you gave me a garlic bread. One I piece did of give you garlic bread. All right. So, so she was like, don't go home. Just stay a night. So he was going to go back to Jersey after drinking. Bronx from Jersey, Charlotte. Come on, man. Right. Five yeah, minutes. You shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't have been drinking and driving, though. You're right. Okay. I don't drink and drive. Okay. So right. I'm not drinking and driving. All right. But if so, you're in the car, it doesn't matter <laughs> if he's <laughs> <laughs> it not part of the Oh, we upstairs now. We upstairs now. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'm eight. saying, I'm saying she's like, I don't drink and drive. So you're drunk. I you drive. <laughs> no like we were there to be second eyes. Yo, so so we upstairs. She got us lost like three times on the way, but we um we went upstairs. So she like, I just at night, and I'm like, I right. she like, it's the famous words. Now if if I lay here, you're not gonna try to touch me, right? And I'm like. Nah, should I put pillows here for a barrier? And I was like, nah, you good. It's three o'clock in the morning now. Now she got her fucking one a, a spaghetti string thing that you just see the side nipple coming out. No, wow. you booty shorts. And, and she, went like she went like this. Listen, she went like this. She went like this in the bed. 
He like, this is our barrier. Just went like this three times. <laughs> you don't cross this line right here. My friends in the other room, and I was like, I can't do this. We got, I'm going to fuck up our friendship. I'm getting out. So I got up, and I went to my friend's room, and I lay down in her bed. I was like, I got to come in this, room, in this room. And she looked at me, and she was like, bitch, if you don't get the fuck out of here and grab a condom out of my thing. And I was like, no. So she literally kicked me out of her bed. It was like, you can't be in here. And I'm like, and I came can't back go with a back. Condom. No, I did not come back with a condom. I went back to the bed, and then I went back and got the condom. <laughs> Did you already touch Wax's penis to know what size condom he needed when you went back to your girl? No, room? I just brought back whatever condom sh I, she had. You didn't just grab one. like a like a grocery <laughs> bag from Gristini's or something. Oh, like I that? didn't have one at night. She that didn't night. have a condom. We had to use had, her yeah, condom. Yeah, 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 of like, course, Wax didn't have no condom. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, man. All right, next, man. Maybe you can okay. Do good? Yeah, I'm good. So, so y'all uh, had sex. All right, so bye. Had sex. Yes. And he came on the first time. Oh yeah. In the condom? Did he come in the condom? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, did the top of it kind of blow up like uh... a... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, she like, definitely felt the force. Balloons. Yeah. She definitely felt the force. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. bye. Are we done with yes. That was a lot of blessings. Yeah. I know one thing. Food at, food at y'all wedding going to be fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, my family cooked. She got all... every Hell, Spanish. yeah. Tostonas. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that. Tostones. Yeah, did you, did you just yell Corona and start coughing? <laughs> Yo, yeah, you gotta be Tostones. <laughs> what else I know? You know. Nubian. Uh, Como estas? Nubian. So I had to throw out the garbage. How's garbage? Uh, lo, la, la blase. Saca la basura. Barasura. Barasura. What's wrong with you? You're right. This is absolutely positively goddamn incredible. Yo, Wax, you gotta learn learn this one. You what gotta um you gotta learn uh uh chupame chupamelo. You know that one. I know what the hell that is. Chupame pinga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the bullshit. <laughs> I know all the bullshit. I know Buta, Marigold, like, ooh, 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 Explain oh, to like us what's happening me right now, bro. <laughs> Explain Listen. to us what's happening. Ah, the, 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 the cleaning lady here and she is she's older Spanish. It's like Mama Anita, bro. And she hearing me say that. You know what? You know what that stuff means, Charlotte? Bro. No. Hey, Carla, oh. can you please explain to Wax that in Spanish culture, you can make these jokes. It's OK. It's nothing that she never heard before. I'm not Spanish. I, I, mean, I told him a plan. Oh, Carla. Yeah. What? No, I, I said, said Charlotte. I'm no, like, I'm no. Spanish? Why are you asking me? No, Charlotte, explain <laughs> to her. That old woman heard all before. these jokes before. Come on. I'm sure she sucked plenty of dicks in her lifetime. She's like 70 something. Yo, come on now. She got kids. Oh, yeah. But that's she not fair. She's so Spanish. Spanish. You don't want to hear that from me, though. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to hear She her. knows we fucking, she cleans up after us. All right, I get it. But you don't want her to do that. What the fuck? Are you, uh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. She cleans up what after y'all fuck? What is okay, she bye, saying? Bye. Bye. God this. damn. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about Young Thug this week and how Young Thug says no matter how much he washes, his dick is still dirty. So I'm like, well, what the fuck? What are y'all doing? She got me, man. She got me. I'm having fun on the boat. Yo, bro, we it's so crazy because the water's so close. It's like I go out in the backyard and like we don't get home to two, three o'clock in the morning sometimes. Just in the middle. I'm out there fishing two o'clock in the morning. It's really crazy. You be catching shit that late? Hell yeah. Like big ass fish, yo. It's unbelievable. It's too late to be on the water. Listen, show, just pay some bills and then I want to come back and I want to do a deep dive on uh, Little Boosty's comments about uh, getting his 12 and 13 year old son and nephew some some head. All right, let's do it. Hey, pay the bills, I gotta piss. All right, and then I'm gonna go to that bonito right after you. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Guys, um, listen, I'm sure all the, con you know, I'm sure all the, all the sex talk that we just had got you guys a little bit riled up. Um, you might need to go find yourself a girl that can, can get it out of you the way Carla gets it out of wax. 
Now, um, if you want to have the sexual escapade of your life, what I would recommend is getting that blue chew. Okay, same active ingredient that's in Cialis or Viagra, the exact same thing, only it activates twice as fast because you're chewing it up. You're not just swallowing and waiting for that shit to work. Mm -hmm. This is a guaranteed night of your life. No fucking around. You give your girl what she deserves. And ladies, if you're listening right now, get your man that so that he can give you what you deserve. It's quarantine. This quarantine about to wrap up a couple more weeks. Spend a weekend getting freaky. And you know what? It's free. With our promo code, right, idiots, or, or actually idiot, you go to um, you go to uh, bluechew.com and use our promo code idiots with the S at the end. That's right, bluechew.com, promo code idiots, S at the end. You can get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 for shipping. That's right. Shipping hard dicks right to your mailbox. $5. Sh- that's it. $5 shipping, and it's yours the most amazing sexual escapade that you ever had, guaranteed by Blue Chew. Go get it. Sign up right now. BlueChew.com slash idiots. Use our promo code idiots and you will get it. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice. And we thank them for sponsoring the brilliant idiots. Now, let's get back to the show. Charlotte, look at that timing. Look at that timing. Yeah, and I gotta go, my brother. I got, I got, a, I got a gig right now. I got okay. a couple guys on the dock waiting on me. Do your thing, uh, bro. Appreciate that. Yeah, I got going on um, Bully and the Beast. There's some more wax stories and um, Sky Blue Reynolds. You know, come out here. I would love for y'all to get up on a boat and do something. We ain't nobody coming man. to Florida at a time like this. Any a time like this, the boat ain't going nowhere. It's right in the backyard. That's you know right. So when the quarantine over, absolutely. Yeah, let's come out here. I'm gonna keep fixing up. By the time y'all get there, it's gonna probably be a totally different boat. I'm just keep on renovating and making it better. So, um, yeah. Now, are be you gonna move there, back bro. here? Yeah, I'd be safe, huh? Are you gonna move back here eventually? Or are you staying down there forever? Yeah, I mean, Wax got a couple of spots. You know what I'm saying? I'm still me. Just upgrade it. Love it. Now, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, you know good and well you can't keep a Puerto Rican from the Bronx. You got to go back to the Bronx, natural man. habitat. She ain't from the Bronx, man. You don't, have, you don't have to be from there. You just can't keep Puerto Ricans from there. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, she, yeah. She, she, she out here. She good out here in Florida. That's where she from, so she good. Right. I am going to do some push-ups on the boat, man. All right, be do safe. your thing, bro. My brother, love. Blessings, man. Love. Peace. Be safe. Blessings. Hey, man. Elon, hey. Musk, Elon Musk is the man, bro. Talk to me. He's, bro, Elon Musk... You know, uh, he opened up his, his plant this week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He wasn't supposed to. Yeah. I didn't even notice. They say he sued California and threatened to go to Texas. Tesla won. And now they'll reopen the whole county folded. <laughs> like the, the California, the headline says California officials cat, cap, what is it? capitulate to Elon Musk, allow Tesla plant to reopen. hundred percent. I mean, God, it is, con- it is illegal what they're doing. They can't really make you stay home. You have the right to a public assembly. It's part of the Constitution. If we all want to just go outside, we could. It is oh, it is 100% oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. illegal what they're doing. But we're all on board with it because we think it's going to make a difference. That being said, we have to decide how long we need to do this for. The statistics that are coming back in right now about corona are very shifty. And uh, we need to figure out what is right, what's wrong, man. This shit changes every fucking day. I saw Dr. Fauci on TV two days ago saying, don't wear a mask. Son, I'm like what? <laughs> I'm like, huh? it's it's don't wear a mask. It's do wear a mask. It's there's only one mask that works. There's one, there's so many different things going on. Even the death statistics. Have you seen this shit? This is where shit gets crazy. Well, Doctor Fauci said that uh, it's it's been eighty something thousand. He said he thinks it's more. Yo, but check it. Anybody with corona symptoms is considered a corona. a corona death. Okay, yeah. so that means you get hit by a bus. They bring you in. And they see that you are wheezing a little bit. They're like, oh, is that is he coughing? Probably Corona. They don't even got to test you if you have Corona symptoms. There's a million symptoms of Corona. And the reason why they're doing it is because the hospitals are fucking empty. They're furloughing doctors, right? They're going out of business. And in the stimulus bill, they said that they'll, they will give stimulus money to the people hospitals with corona. yeah they have cases with with symptoms who die from corona so the hospitals like 13 grand or some shit like that. son it's like if, if you use a ventilator it's thirty nine thousand or some shit like that so basically they're like fuck it put that motherfucker on a ventilator for a little bit oh that person died oh yeah was he coughing a little bit before well shit say say he had corona because then we get 13 grand when he dies we don't get 13 grand if he dies from you know a heart attack i'm gonna tell you something man this is why and i truly believe this and i just Capitalism shouldn't be in the healthcare system, bro. 
Like just make healthcare free and figure out a way to pay these doctors and surgeons and everybody top dollar. And mm. by the way, if you can fucking dump, you know, one point eight trillion dollars into the economy, the Democrats asked for three trillion dollars this week. If y'all got that kind of money just to dump, mm. you know, what I mean, for shit like this, y'all got the money for free health care. bro. But that's the you, thing. You, you, you absolutely do. This is not capitalism. Capitalism would actually help this. This is the opposite no, it is of capitalism. capitalism because no. if you it's, it's capitalism because if they're telling you, if they're saying, look, we're going to pay you this amount of money if you have coronavirus patients. So it makes you lie about, you know, the coronavirus right, but, patients. But that money That's is capitalism. No, nah, capitalism would be the opposite. Capitalism would be free market. So the market would decide who got helped. Right. And the market would go, oh, actually, uh, we this these hospitals aren't functioning right now. There's they're actually we're actually going out of business when we're only helping Corona patients. Well, what they would probably do is stop labeling people as Corona because that scares people from going into hospitals for their elective procedures. And they'd go, actually, we have way less Corona deaths. It's okay. Hospitals are good. Come on in. We're going to go out of business unless well, we have other people. Well, come nobody in. nobody knew that though. Like that was a that was a a conspiracy theory for a while, right? The What's fact that? that they were labeling people. When people would die, they would label you with Corona when you didn't have Corona. I don't even know if that's actually still has been confirmed. I just yeah. know that's something that people, that's I mean, been it a conspiracy is, theory that people have been talking about. It I is, do know that that's I do not know you get paid. That's not conspiracy. It is confirmed that you are labeled a Corona death if you have Corona symptoms and Where, they are not. Cite your sources. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up right now. But from but everything I, I've read, uh, what I do know you get paid though. Hospitals get paid a certain amount of money. That's part of the stimulus. Corona. Yes. So to me, that's the alt. That's the ultimate version of capitalism. Um, it would, but getting paid by the government isn't a free market system. A free market would let the actual market decide what is the most valuable surgery to get, or what is the most valuable valuable use of the hospital. Well, maybe okay. Well, maybe the word ain't capitalism, but when you have a money hungry goddamn healthcare system, right? Agreed, you dude. Have, I agree you, with when you, you. When you have a money hungry healthcare system, this is why healthcare should be affordable to fucking everybody. That shouldn't even be affordable. It should be fucking be free. I agree. This is a perfect <laughs> example of like how corrupt shit gets when money is involved. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. Whether mm -hmm. it's money from the government or money from the people, but if exactly. you make it for profit, people are going to gravitate towards that for profit situation. <laughs> Absolutely. And they're doing it probably for good reason. Like they're furloughing doctors, they're laying off doctors. So they're like, well, shit, we don't want to fire doctors. We got to make sure our nurses are paid. We got to make sure all these people are paid, even though nobody's in the hospital because the corona, uh, the curve has been flattened and way less people are going to the hospital with corona. So we, they got to find a way to keep generating revenue or they're going to have to fucking close. I don't know, bro. This shit, man, we talk about essentials. If healthcare is not an essential thing, then I don't know what the fuck is. If this quarantine <laughs> didn't show us this, if this pandemic didn't show us how essential health care is and why everybody in America should have access to good health care, my God. Like some shit you got to have a heart for, bro. Like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, why wouldn't you just let people get free fucking health care when they need it and pay the doctors top dollar? Pay doctors and teachers top dollar, bro. Yeah. Doctors and fucking teachers need, should be getting paid top dollar. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm with it. Let's let's pay them more. That being said, it doesn't help the situation. I think I think what's what's helping this situation or it would be if we and Elon Musk was talking about it on Rogan. He's like, we just need more data right now. We don't have any data. He was the one. My source is Elon Musk. He was the one that, that was saying that they're misreporting the deaths and that they're not uh, including primary source, uh, primary causes or secondary causes. For example, if you have Corona, but you get eaten by a shark. The shark is what killed you, not Corona, but you'll get labeled yeah. as a Corona death because anybody who has Corona and dies, it gets labeled as Corona death. When, 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 when it should be, when it should be, um, he had symptoms of coronavirus or he had coronavirus, but, some but other shit he killed also him. had diabetes. Yeah. yeah. He also had cancer. He also had, uh, but then other things, the coronavirus is causing, they say blood clots and shit. That's the thing. So it, it can lead to these things. But if the main reason, if 90% of the reason is because of that, that other thing you have, then maybe we blame it on that so that the whole world who's healthy isn't afraid yeah. of it. I mean, I saw the craziest statistic about Corona and Rogan said it on a podcast. This was dope. Is that the age of death for coronavirus, right? Is higher than the age of death for just living. Interesting. It, in other words, if most people die at 73 or 77 or whatever, and the average age of like guaranteed Corona death is 80, you're outliving life. 
We shut the whole yeah. world down for a disease that kills people who have already outlived life. No, I know. I'm gonna tell you something. I go back to what I said originally. I don't. I'm think, wrong on Al. Yes. I don't think. What is it? Hold on. Fuck. Al says I'm wrong on it. Uh, um, you're not. This is Elon Musk saying it. So you you tell Elon he's wrong. I don't know. No, it's just so that statistic is like um, misleading because they're taking every single person who dies and then getting the average of that death. So if a kid dies by getting hit from a car, that seven-year-old is, is included in that average. Yeah. Right now with corona, you're only taking the average of the people who die from corona. And we know already that corona affects older people than it does younger people. So the average is going to be skewed because corona affects older people than it does younger people. That's the point, though. That, that's what they're saying. They're saying that that it's a, a disease that affects older people because they have much weaker immune systems, Where whereas life, sometimes you die when you're young, sometimes you die when you're old. But if you take all those people that end up dying, and sometimes a seven-year-old is going to skew those lives shorter. But if you look at overall averages of when people die and overall averages of the people that die from corona, they actually die later on than life. I just think a better statistic would be if you take all the people who die from natural causes, like not a seven-year-old who passes. Like that's, that's, that's better. Then I think it would be a more realistic. Like, oh, you're saying because if you, if you eliminated all those people, the seven, the young people that die in car accidents, all that kind of shit, then our life expense can see would be higher. Time. That's fair. Yeah. Great point. Great point. But still similar. So yeah. So basically you have all this like conflicting data and I'm not saying one is right or wrong, but we don't really know what is right. And when we don't know what truly is right, we can't make accurate assessments or decisions on when to reopen the country. And that's why everybody's saying, like uh, all the doctors are saying that the country is not being reopened because of science or data. It's being opened because of politics and the economy. And, and that's, that's the truth to the matter. I, yeah, I, I, it's, it's sad because it's like people act like they're afraid to say they don't know. Mm -hmm. but if you don't know, you don't fucking know. And Dr. Fauci said the realest shit. He was like, yo, you reopen the economy too soon. You might cause more needless suffering, more death, and you might do permanent damage to the fucking economy. Right. And you if you don't reopen it too soon, the exact same thing could happen. It's, it's all, hey, you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's just, it isn't, I think that what's happened is they shut down the entire world, right? Literally 80% of the world is probably locked in, shelter in place, right? Cartels are telling people that they have to stay at home. Gangs are telling their members they have to stay at home. Everybody across the world is in their house. And yeah, that's why I don't understand how they find time to still shoot people in Brooklyn. But it's, yeah. it's impressive. These are hardworking gang members. It absolutely okay? is. Okay. Um, if, and they're shutting it down because they're like, yo, a second wave could come. We got to be careful. If a second wave doesn't come, and if the numbers come out that show that this, the show that this actually wasn't as bad as they said it would be, you think we will ever trust them again about a health crisis? Who is Not them, though? The... Fauci's of the world, the the CDC, the people that basically said for our benefit, we got to stay inside. If it turns out this wasn't as big a deal as they said it was, we'll never trust them again. So you don't yeah, think, we will. in yeah, my we opinion, will. in my opinion, we won't trust them you again. Know, you, you know, you know why? That's just in my opinion. No, you know why? Yeah. We, we still trust meteorologists, bro. We still trust fucking weathermen. Every weatherman can tell us it's about the snow. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be eight feet of snow. And we go to the grocery store. And we buy all this shit and nothing happens. And we still turn the fucking news on. Like we still, like we still, we still right. trust weathermen, bro. Yeah, no, that's interesting. That is true. It's, it's but, technically, but technically weathermen what don't shut doing down. It's just a forecast. Yeah, but here's the thing. A weatherman doesn't like make my family's business go out of business with their decision, right? If they're, they're basically like, it's going to rain tomorrow, but they're not saying, yo, everything that you guys work for, you got to shut down and now just sell it and it's done. Right? Because well, that's I the mean, state. I, that's what's going on. That's what's at stake right now. It's like- but is, it, but is it Fauci's fault? No, it's not Fauci's fault. Like, I think that the doctors are doing what doctors do, right? Is make decisions based on close to worst case scenario to save as many people as possible, which I think is the mm -hmm. admirable right thing to do. I don't think he's a villain. I think he's doing everything that's right and he's an honorable man. I think that politicians, right, who have acted on this have said, this is so deadly. It's going to get everybody. We got to be careful. And then it turned out to not be as deadly and they don't want to look wrong. So they're basically saying, hey, how do we make this seem as deadly as we said it was going to be so we don't look wrong and then they go all right anybody who's got corona symptoms uh, just include that as a as a corona death do us a favor i think well, either, that's how it, that works i get it but either way eighty thousand people dead is it's enough 
for somebody to be like, okay, yeah, that's bad. You know what I'm saying? Like when you see that death toll on TV all day long and they're, they're just ringing it off. You're like, I don't want to be in that number. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think all of us at to this point probably know at least one person who passed away from coronavirus. Maybe no question. Had it. You're hundred percent right. I know, I know three, you know what I'm saying? My uncle Jim, uh, brother Akbar Muhammad, um, as well as, uh, Fred the Godson, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like, these are three people that I personally know. Right. right. So it's like, that's enough for me. Wait, this, this is America, baby. All we need is one. You know You're right. All, all we need is one. Once that one person gets it, everybody's like, shit. It's real. You think, you think, you think millions of people didn't start wearing condoms in the 90s when Magic got HIV? Right. Yeah. You think, you think when Easy e died, millions of people didn't start putting on condoms? Yeah. Because Come on, man. That's just the, that's the era we live in. Yeah, it does make it real. 100%. Don't deny that. And I want to save as many people as possible. There's no question, you know, but there are a lot of things out there that kill far more people than Corona that we seem to not really care about smoking. I agree. A hundred percent. Yo, smoking. real talk. They tried smoking. to outlaw vaping because they're like, yo, it's killing people. And people went, fuck you. Trump said that. Yeah. Trump, <laughs> Trump, Trump even tried to outlaw vaping. vaping. I said bacon. Trump, <laughs> Trump, 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 Trump tried to outlaw vaping. Listen, smoking kills 480,000 people a year. And smoke cigarettes have no nutritional value whatsoever. Mm. That shit is just for profit, bro. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. I, you know, people don't like that. They're like, oh, smoking is not addictive and smoking is a choice. And I just and that. I, listen, either you care about life or you don't. You and look, you have I guess the difference between Corona and smoking is that smoking is your choice to hurt yourself. Corona, you could be hurting someone else. And, yeah. and it is an important distinction to make. If Corona only affected you when you went outside, we would be still at work right now because people would be able to take a risk that's with right. their own life. But now you're taking that's a right. risk with someone else's life. That's right. Absolutely. And that's why 100%. it is different. That being said, <clears throat> we do have a lot of things to cause a lot of death and we just accept and move on with our life with it. And it's eventually we're going to have to open the economy. It's no question. Eventually we do. We all agree on that. It's that's, just I mean, when. That, shit, that, shit, that shit's open already. I still believe that coronavirus... I still feel like they don't know what the fuck it is and they didn't know what it was. And so everybody just was like, whoa, mm. shut everything down until we figure it out. Mm. And I still I think right now there's still more than one uh, strain of coronavirus. show, mm. Only because coronavirus, some people get it and after 14 days, they're good. Some people get it and they are fucked up. Now you got these kids getting it and they uh, developing what's it called? Kawasaki disease. I don't know. Oh, yeah, man. That's the scary part. It's one thing when it's it's one thing when it's the when it's the older people and the adults, but when it starts affecting the kids, mm -hmm. oh man, it's something called Kawasaki disease. I think it affects your respiratory system as well, and it gives you some type of rash and something else. But it's just like, and it's, it's like a couple kids in New York already died from it. Are they dying? That's another thing. It's like they they throwing yeah, every yeah. statistic like, like, out nah, there like, to scare the shit out of you. Nah, like a couple kids died. A couple kids in New York died of Kawasaki disease. I know, I know Chris knows. It's an Asian word. Chris. Is Chris there? Yes. You know Kawasaki disease, right? Yes. Have you read about it? Yes. It's a side effect of Corona, right? It's an inflammatory condition that they think is li linked to Corona. Boom. So, yeah. They think... What? Hey man, I'm sure I'm sure they're making it up. I wouldn't worry about it. They're probably just making it up. You think so? Chris is being of sarcastic. Course not. Oh, I'm, I'm, what the fuck? Yeah. I was like, what? I'm like, hell no. Yeah, I, I, I listen. All of that stuff like that. It's just like I'm not taking no chances, bro. I'd rather be safe than sorry. But I'm also one of the people who knows that they are in the position to where I don't have to take any chances. I'm not right. a person that, ha I'm not an essential worker. I'm not a person that has to go to work. I'm not a person that, you know, has no choice but to take their kids to school because I have to go to work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I think if we actually knew what the fuck was going on, we could make some decisions, but the reality is we don't. And it's been nobody, so, it's been so does, skewed though. and nobody does. It's been so skewed and so politicized that it makes it even that much more difficult. That is the fucked up part about it. It has been politicized, but here's the thing that everybody needs to understand. Something is going on. 
hundred percent. All right. Something is making people sick. Something is killing people. We, I, all of this shit about when people say it's not real, that's just stupid to me. How do we like, save just, the most people possible? That's really what it comes down to. I think we're doing it now. I, I think mean, what's happened. I think <laughs> what's happened in the past two months is how you say the most people possible outside of getting a vaccine or some type of treatment. Apparently, the total death toll of people is down because everybody's just inside. So you're not having like work related deaths. You're not having car crashes. You're not having all these other things. So the total human death toll is actually less. Corona again, is actually saving lives. Once again, yeah. essentials. I don't lead. A, I don't have. I'm a homebody. Yeah. I yeah. like being home. Yeah. There's no. I don't, what's the point of just being out? I yeah. never understood that. I, I got to just be out. Why? Uh, I, I'm not going to lie, bro. Like the other day I was walking down the street with my girl in this Italian place, set up shop and they were open. They were serving some little apps and some drinks that you could take on the street. And I wasn't even hungry or thirsty, but I just bought some shit just because I wanted that human interaction. I wanted to feel like I, I want to feel that like sense of normalcy again, you know, I and it. I, I was just, it was great. I loved it. I fucking I loved it. it. I get it. I get it. Listen, you know? I want a, a little Boosie, man. Um, oh, yeah. Tell me about this Boosie thing. I don't know if you saw the comments that little Boosie made, but uh, Taylor can probably put the clip in. But the, but basically, little Boosie, let me see if I got a transcript of it here anywhere. We can move on. Shit you won't care about next week. Um, oh, you don't have it in here, Taylor? The little Boosie shit? Basically, little Boosie was taking smoke because he said that he's paid women to give his nephew and i think son oral sex how old are they like 12 like 12 and 13 i believe um yeah it's tricky i think i got head when i was 14 maybe from who though uh um An older just, woman nah that's what i mean what yeah <laughs> Yeah, she wasn't that. Uh, she wasn't old. I'm trying to think though, man. Like, mm, yeah, it's tricky, man. It's illegal. I don't think it's tricky. I um, I can see, listen. I think that if if Lil Boosie was to get arrested for that, um, which I see people calling for, I mm -hmm. see people, you know, sending his video to the police department in Louisiana. So if you know they came to investigate him and you know, like, like child services and they arrested him. I would totally understand why. I think that, um, this situation is bigger than little Boosie though. Cause I think it's generational. I think it's generational trauma, but I also think it's the way that we look at manhood. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. like, like the, like the younger you start having sex, you know, for so long in this country, it's like, you're, like you're, 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 they, they paint you as a, as a man, so to speak. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like like a, like the way we look at daughters, like if our daughters are, are, are fucking early or if an older guy was fucking with our daughter, we mad at our daughter and we want to kill the dude. If it's a young man with an older woman, we kind of cheering the shit on. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, we reward it. Yeah. And, and, and as somebody who, you know, me, I got molested when I was eight years old and I just started calling it molestation over the past few years. All before I was just like, I got head when I was eight years old by an older woman. You know what I mean? But when you're young, you don't look at it like that. And I've told this story a million times. Like, you know, me and all my boys, we was eight, nine years old talking about these older women that we mm -hmm. was fucking around with and actually clowning each other, saying that we were lying. When the truth of the matter is, all of us was probably getting motherfucking touched on, mm. you know? Regardless of what the intention is, abuse is abuse. And you don't know how that's going to traumatize, you know, somebody later in the future. You know, so I think it's a larger conversation that's that's bigger than that's bigger than little Boosie. And I think that conversation is just about, once again, the why of it all. Like, why do we over sexualize men mm. and, and make and make men feel like, you know, the sooner you have sex, the more of a man you are, mm. you know, like, I don't see why we're in such a rush to you know, let, let turn, turn boys into men per se, mm. you know, there's just certain things you should discover on your own. Yeah. I felt that as a kid, if I don't lose my virginity by this age, am I a loser? You know, if I'm Why'd not, you feel that way? 
Uh, probably movies or something like that. You know, maybe mm-hmm. TV shows, mm-hmm. maybe social pressure. You know, I think, and that shit carries as you go. You go on into like you know your you go to spring break right with your friends and it's like well if i don't hook up on spring break then this shit was pointless and you put all this like unnecessary pressure on yourself to to like achieve these goals that really aren't goals like banging a girl drunkenly in spring break is not a goal it's not an accomplishment but i think it's it's like i I thought i probably was like i'm always thinking like oh if i do that then i must be like charming funny and like good looking that will validate me as those things and I think as I've like had more success in my career, I'm more validated by that instead of like these, these weird like uh, accomplishment, like treating women like accomplishments, if you will. Yeah. But you know, to the boozy thing is interesting because yeah, it is generational and it is cultural too. You know, like I think, I think there's certainly p- pressure not only from your friends but your family. Like, right? what do they always say every Christmas? So you got a girlfriend? So yeah. what's going on? You got any girls in your life? So was yeah. it like? And you want to come to Christmas and go, yeah, I got a girl, or yeah, I'm hooking up, or yeah, I'm getting laid. And that, yeah, and that's that's exactly like when you look at the Boosie situation, it's like attacking Boosie isn't going to change that ideology, right? Because to me, when when I, I guarantee, you, if you have a conversation with Boosie, Boosie would say his uncles did that to him, mm. or his father you know, did that to him. Some father figure in his life did that to him. So in his mind, that's a rite of passage when you get to a certain age. It's kind of like a, the, 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 the sick, perverted version of a bar mitzvah, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's, when you be, that's when you become a man in his mind. Yeah. Right? So he's just passing on what he was taught. So it's just like, how do you break that cycle, right? Because to me, I want to be able to pass on more to my kids than just trauma. That's not what I, I don't want to pass that on to my kids. Like, and then also when you're from the hood, man, when you're from the hood and you're from the ghetto, you really don't got nothing else to give your kids. Yo. So what, so, so what I would tell Boosie now, Boosie, you got way more to offer your kids than probably the people that raised you had to offer you. All yeah. they could offer you was that, that hood shit that gave you that sense of pride and that sense of validation. I got hell when I was 13. Yeah. My older woman, you know what I mean? But now Boosie, you got way more to pass on to your kids and just that kind of trauma you yeah I mean? and he probably is doing that too like he's probably I'm passing sure. on way more but yeah and it's a weird thing like even calling it trauma is weird because what makes something trauma and what makes something culture like if that's what happens to everybody and everybody in his family and all those people's friends are doing that exact thing well culture can be a crime it it could be a crime you, out- could, be in a, you could be in a drug family it's this, that's the culture yeah. with the crime. Yeah, but you know what it, I mean? yeah, but like being it, you're saying a drug family. Yeah, you could be a family that the father sold drugs and the uncle right. sold drugs, and you started selling drugs. It could be that culture of that family, but it's still a crime. It's, it's still, still it's still wrong. It is still wrong. It's still a crime. But I don't know if it gives you the same trauma than if you experience something way different than everybody else experience. It depends, right? Like I looked at um, like I said, I always. Started talking about my situation because I saw Tyler Perry on Oprah yeah. crying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you could watch a movie like Antoine Fisher. And Antoine Fisher was getting, you know, touched on by a young woman. This and that. Like, I don't know if the if 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 certain if guys some guys may not want to do that. Think about it, right? If you in the hood, if you anywhere, not even just the hood, if you anywhere and you're getting pressured by an uncle or a father, like, now nah, you're gonna come get you're gonna let this woman give you head, this and that. What if I don't want it? Yeah. You know what I mean? What if I'm just doing it because daddy's making me? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that shit is a lot. Like, come on, I man. wonder, I really wonder if you never saw Tyler Perry and nobody ever told you otherwise, if it would be less traumatic or more traumatic. Like, is ignorance bliss? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know. Uh, you know what I'm nah, saying? I think, nah, I don't think ignorance is bliss because if it was, it would be a lot more happy people. But um, I think when it comes to that situation, I wasn't. I was traumatized when I was young because I made her stop. Like I literally took fucking firecrackers, the little shit that you throw and they pop on the ground. I was throwing them at her to leave me the fuck alone. Uh, but the trauma didn't come. I mean, of course it felt good when she's doing it to you, but the trauma comes when you know that this woman is doing something she shouldn't be doing to you and you're telling her to stop. Right. right. And, and the trauma comes from her calling me ugly after the fact. Like, are oh, you ugly anyway? 
Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, 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 and going out of her way to like make me feel fucked up. All like, right. So you know, check it. Let me give you a different example, but like something that's co- totally normal, right? Like mm-hmm. circumcision, right? I'm circumcised, right? Mm-hmm. That's totally normalized. Everybody gets circumcised. It's totally normalized to the point where if you're not circumcised in America, people look at you like something's wrong with you. Right? Okay. That being said, it's pretty traumatic. Someone's snipping off the end of your dick like that without my permission, without anything. You just cutting my fucking dick up. You just mutilating my dick. And nobody's gonna pet. ask me about that shit. Like nobody asked me permission. But you're and, a child. And the and the parents, the parents get permission. That's my point. You're a child, right? So like that shit happened to you when you were a child. That's why it's wrong. That girl was sucking on your dick. I'd rather a girl suck my dick than cut it off. Man, what the fuck? Let's I'm just see. saying it's an I'm, interesting I'm, point. I'm, you know, you know why I'm pro circumcision? Go. You being so insensitive right now. Think about all the women who've been traumatized by them goddamn fucking turtleneck penises. Son, that's the that's the PR that they give, bro. What if they like that shit better? Like, this is how amazing the PR is around <laughs> circumcision. Think about this. We call your dick, if it's not circumcised, we call it uncircumcised instead of just a dick, the way a dick is supposed to be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they've they've like f- made us feel a certain way about our dicks that if they're not actually, that, yeah, actually it should be called natural, right? It should natural, be organic. it should be called dick. Organic, yeah, organic that's the OG. dick. Yeah, that yeah, whole, yeah, yeah, literally yeah, 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 the whole yeah, yeah. food, the whole of it. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Bro, but like, what do they what do they do with all that foreskin? That's where they make the yarmulkes, bro. What if that shit is that leather on your goddamn chair? <laughs> 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 so that's balling. That's what if, what if, balling right what there. What if all of us have been sitting on foreskin couches all these years Yo, and not even bro, knowing? That's it? next level balling right there, bro. <laughs> that's Come why on. when you sleep and you sweat a little bit, it's so sticky. <laughs> <laughs> you got to peel yourself off that foreskin. <laughs> Oh, listen, all I'm simply saying is I think it's a logic conversation to be had with the little boosty thing. I don't think it's about one individual, I think it's about an ideology because I've seen this a million times. I remember. I don't know what the fuck I was watching. It was something with Lil Wayne. A Lil Wayne talk about, talked about how he made uh, one of his artists, I think it was Chucky or somebody, it was somebody he made them get head. And he was like, that's what Baby them used to do to me. And I remember Cameron said in the rap one time. Um, Diddy uh, to he, Usher. Didn't Diddy take Usher around, get his dick sucked a bunch early on or know. something like that? I don't know. Nothing about that shit. <laughs> I thought that didn't that happen like when Usher was young and coming up wasn't there a story told yeah like Diddy told me took me around and I learned how to be a man blah 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 I don't know about that but I do know uh, that, that happened look, it did that happen happened. right mm-hmm. were you were how there you know, what, what was it like I saw the documentary yeah what? that was, was it, it, it was like in the documentary like, like I the saw documentary? it's like on YouTube I was watching it and they said that he him he used to do it to um, Bow Wow but mm-hmm. JD did the bow wow and stuff like that. They all do that, the young ones. That's what I'm saying, man. It's fucked up. It's a culture. You know what I mean? And and it's it's like that's what needs to be discussed. It needs to be like, first of all, you didn't do your hair because you got braids. But it, it needs to be discussed <laughs> that it, it, it needs to be discussed. It's like this is bigger than one individual. This is something right. that men think is cool. Like and, men and, think it's cool to take a little young dude. And get his dick up. He's supposed to see some head or something like that, bro. It that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a difference between trauma and culture, and sometimes things that we look at as a crime and are bad are completely normalized within a culture. Like within a drug dealing family, they don't think it's that bad. Let's be honest. Still a crime, though. No? It's still a crime. Or, or here's a better version of it. Within the political family. You know, the political families that probably got to do some foul shit to keep getting reelected or probably got to, you know, maybe like say some lies to the people to continue their power, et cetera. That's normalized within the family. Is it not? Like there's two generations of Bushes that were, you know, presidents. You don't think the same secrets and same game got passed down? Yeah. Sometimes you got a lot of the people. Absolutely. But once again, it's still a crime. You know what I'm saying? Not saying it's not. Yeah, but like and I how- think the, the the only way to the only way to show that something is wrong, sadly, is to hold people accountable, mm. right? So a lot of times that's how when you that's a lot of times that's when people open their eyes. They're like, oh shit, that's that that is wrong. Mm. When somebody gets locked up, like even when you talk about politics, when somebody gets locked up, when somebody gets impeached, then you like, 
what they did was wrong. Mm. Until then, you're just normalizing the same shit over and over. And I think that's what happens in a situation like this. Mm. You know, men have been doing this shit for so long. Like, yeah, man, uh, he getting some pussy now too. Uh, yeah, I got him some pussy. Like, you've been doing that shit for so long that it's like you're normalizing that shit. And eventually it becomes circumcision. Where if what? you, <laughs> where, think about it. Eventually it becomes circumcision where if you don't do it, you're the weirdo. Yeah, and oh, yes, you're absolutely right. And I'll tell you what else. Think about all those movies we grew up on in the 80s and the 90s. If you wasn't getting no pussy, you was a loser. And it was all about people trying to get their first piece of fucking pussy. Boom. Always. Boom. So, of course, we're going to feel the pressure. Weird, every, every movie was, I got to get laid before I go to college. So, you're going to feel crazy pressure to yeah. get laid before you go to college because you don't want to be like the losers in the movie. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's just a conversation. It's deeper. We, I agree it, with it your is. point, it's, it's though. A way, it's a way broader conversation than just though Boosie's a fucked Ex- up person. Exactly. It's easy to just point the finger at a little Boosie and then you feel good about yourself. But if you really want to change something up, you got to address the culture that we all Absolutely. live in, in in America, which is like, Absolutely. yo, it's kind of cool to get laid at a young age. It's whack, man. It, but but it, it is a double standard because we don't feel like that about women. Like women will get labeled early. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? As whores or sluts. Yeah. Uh, you definitely don't want no older man fucking with your daughter. And you don't want your daughter fucking you. Yo, that's true. You know Yo, you know how that's so fucking true. But you know what's interesting? Women will reward the um, the male promiscuity at a young age. Like, women will say, they be like, oh, yeah, my kid's just such a lady killer. You know what I mean? Oh, you see him, he's out there. Oh, he's killing it in preschool or blah, blah, blah. You had all the girls, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it, yeah. it's joking. It's a joke. Obviously, nothing's happening in preschool, but at the same time, it is rewarding a behavior. Yeah, it's kind of like um culture's passed down from the women, yeah. bro. It's like, it's like, it's like when you put when you plant that seed, it never goes away. That's it. Like, especially when you when you, you know, you're from a certain generation a certain era that puts pride on sleep with as many women as possible get mm. as many bodies under your belt as possible so the earlier you start like you like you know i used to say that shit so nonchalantly i was getting head at eight by 20 something year old mm. like um that's actually not right <laughs> like like she's a fucking fuck she was a fucking pedophile and just like the women that doing that shit the boozy sons and shit is pedophile mm-hmm. i don't even fuck like how can you justify that shit in your mind but I mean, also think about what type of horrible shit is going on in their lives that they got to accept money to suck 12 year old dicks. Like you got some wild shit going on in your life. Yeah, man. You got to be really struggling. Yeah. So I'm ready to have that broader conversation. Um, MJ Doc, what you thought of this week? Uh, the best episode so far. I mean, this is the, you know, you get into the cost of greatness, man. You get into what he believes the cost of greatness is. I what I really wish is that they had Steve Kerr talk about the different ways to win because Steve Kerr has been part of the tyrannical regime that was the Bulls and Michael Jordan. And he's also been part of the free flowing hippie regime that is the Golden State Warriors where everybody's high five in. and, 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 And that's why they lost. Well, they they also won, though. That's why they lost. Michael Jordan. If Michael Jordan had that team around him. Say it. He, they'd be they'd be on championship number six right now. Seven. 100%. Who the fuck knows? No, nah, you're like, right. Now, now listen, you're 100 percent right. That being said, I'm curious about Kerr's um, experience in both and going. I wonder if he would say, you know what? I'd rather not win as many and enjoy coming to work every day than win them all and and literally be frightened every single day of my life. There is absolutely no reason to take Michael Jeffrey Jordan personal. If you're coming in there and doing your fucking job to the best of your ability, mm. not the best of his ability, because Michael, no, you couldn't be him. He made that shit absolutely clear. OK, but all he wanted you to do was be the best you could possibly be. Do you think you that, was that he was on your ass? Do you think that was enough for him? You really think he just stopped at at? Oh, well, that's what Steve Kerr does. Let me just leave him alone now. Come no, on, I think bro. that he looked at a guy like Steve Kerr and knew Steve Kerr could do more. I think he looked at a guy like at Scott. He looked at somebody like Scott Burrell and knew Scott Burrell could do more. He looked at even somebody like Will Perdue and he knew Will Perdue could do more. 
but he so he <laughs> rolled them. He was on their ass, like trying to he was squeezing that greatness out of them. And guess what? They all rise to the occasion. They can't say that they didn't. Now, they're lying to them. They're lying to themselves that they said they didn't rise to the occasion. Every now, single one of them did. Okay, that is fair. And I will ha- I will assist your argument because I don't think he rode a guy like Rodman because Rodman did what already? Woo! Came, showed up every fucking day. He gave it all. Showed up. A, a maniac. He was a maniac like Jordan. Mm-hmm. You he know, was a maniac. What did he say about Scottie Pippen? He'll pick you up 94 feet. He'll play D the whole fuck. So maybe the guys. So this is a good argument for Jordan. That being said, you, in order to get all the juice out of you, it's going to sacrifice some of your joy. And I wonder if they would have rather had more joy and less rings. And Kerr can speak to that. Nah. You say no. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm saying, only reason I'm saying no is because ain't none of y'all on the last dance. Mm. If that's how you would have played the game. Mm. It's a, di- yo, Steve Kerr averaged, let me look up Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr averaged like four points a game, right? Hold on. Let me see Steve Kerr. The only NBA reason we average. care about Steve Kerr is because he had a successful coaching career. That's all it, I'm saying. It has nothing to do with his play as part of the no, Bulls. No, no, but, yeah. but the, Bull, the Bulls too, though. We remember Steve from those teams. No, no, we remember him, but... The only reason that he has a, a place in this documentary that was as big as it was in those last few is because he is a famous person in sports. Like, oh yeah, and because Jordan punched him in the face. Yeah, and that story isn't even included if Steve Kerr doesn't go on to like win championships. Like, I think if nah, he's just yeah, it would yeah, it would yeah. I don't th- like how many people he punched in the face. He probably Bro, punched fifteen people in the face on his team. You're right. They interviewed Will Purdue. Say what? They interview Will Purdue. They interview Bill Winnington. They interview. Scott Burrell. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. They did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that. But maybe they're just including the most interesting interviews with the most like, you know, interesting perspectives on maybe. it. Maybe. But, but, but I'm saying Steve, Steve Kerr averaged six points a game, career, mm-hmm. 1.2 rebounds, mm-hmm. 1.8 assists. Yeah. Right? You're not on the last dance if you don't play with Jordan. 100%. Riding, riding that wave, riding on Superman's cape, mm-hmm. hitting big shots when you needed to, being a part of that three-peat or whatever, you became a part of history. Without you don't a doubt. become that part of history without that. And by the way, those are the stories you tell your grandkids. Let's be for real. Steve Kerr is a, a legend. I love Golden State. I love what they did. Mm-hmm. But guarantee you, Steve Kerr is at dinner. People want to know more about when he played for the Bulls than when he was coaching for Golden State. Yo, you're right. The question is joy. It's like... At what point do you sacrifice joy? I'm I'm trying to take myself out of my own shoes in here because I find joy in the victory. So I I relate more to a Michael Jordan mindset where it's just like whatever it takes, I'm going to squeeze everything out of myself so I expect the people working with me to also leave it all on the table, right? That being said, I'm curious I'm curious to see the opinion of the person that that really values that every single day aspect of their life. Maybe they don't want to be part of something like that. And maybe they're willing to sacrifice winning the championship. I don't see where Jordan, I don't see where they wouldn't have joy playing with Jordan though. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even joking. Like, I, you know how Michael did any of them seem it? like they were having fun? They were like, yo, he was an asshole. He's a jerk. It sucked. We were terrified. Like multiple of them in these episodes go, we were terrified every single but, day. But they didn't dislike him. No, no, they, they did dislike him. They just respected him. You got to respect the goat. I'm with that. Give me the respect then. Because at the end of the day, in hindsight, when mm-hmm. you look back, you can't say he didn't push me for no fucking reason. Yo, but you know what's interesting? When you see Jordan in the documentary when he starts to break down at that one point in time? He's, yeah. He's starting I, know why, I, I know why that was. Okay, I'm curious your perspective. I have a thought on it, but go. Go, what ahead, is go, your, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go um, ahead. I think he's recognizing his mortality. And I think in recognizing his mortality, it's harder for him to cope with the way that he treated people even if it meant winning the championship. I think in his mind, he justified all that behavior because like, this is what I had to do to win. But now that he's separated himself from winning and he's no longer this godlike, uh, you know, uh, entity. Um, no, he still is. He still is, but it's, it has changed. The way kids treat him is different than the way you and I would have treated him as kids. Yeah, but he's still, he's still a walking memorial. Yeah, he is to us, but kids just see him as the guy who has that sneaker brand that's cool. They, I haven't ever even seen him play. In my, this is my suspicion, right? Like, so I think that as he realizes his mortality, 
and he I think it becomes real the way that he affected people and might have really truly hurt people like he broke people he broke players like broke them that they didn't come back from and I think that there's a little regret in that I think and he's trying to justify it to himself he's trying to hold on to this is what I need to do in order to win but the older you get the less valuable those wins are because you live in the present that's my theory what's your theory I, well, first of all, I don't believe that he's not even, I still believe he's relevant to kids only because like the most famous athlete ever, according to like Guinness and all of that shit is Michael Jordan. Right, right. Like, like he's the world's most famous athlete. They say he's one of the most five famous celebrities of the 20th right. century. Makes sense. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and number two, I think that he was crying because he knows we live in this politically correct world and he wanted to let a maggot fly. I think, <laughs> I think that he wanted to let that slur that people use for, for, I think that that slur that was so popular in the 80s and 90s, his eyes started watering because he just wanted to say those fucking punks, those fucking uh, he just wanted to let that shit out so bad. I fucking led y'all to six goddamn championships. Y'all gonna talk about me a, like this? And it's a motherfucking thanks I get you fucking pussies. Like he wanted to go off. That's why he said, let me go take a break. He went outside, smoked a cigar. I guarantee you, you haven't heard the F word used like that since goddamn somebody knew an Elton John concert was coming. <laughs> to- <laughs> I'm, telling you, I'm telling you, I'm fucking telling you that that sh- I'm, I'm telling you that's what it was. He was frustrated. He couldn't believe it because this is the thing about Jordan. This is why I don't feel sorry for nobody on them fucking teams. They were men. They were adults. Mm. Those weren't kids that Michael Jordan was manipulating. Mm. He wasn't a, a, a tyrant college coach. It was a grown ass 30 something year old men. Mm. You got a problem with Jordan? Do what Steve Kerr did. Mm. Push him in the fucking chest. Get punched in your eye. Take the L. That was some soft shit, though. The chest punch. Come on, yo. What? He was fist- you saw how he bigged himself up? He was like, I knew I had to stand up for him. So I twisted his titty. And then from then on, <laughs> he respected me just like any of the other players. <laughs> Get away from me, Jordan. Stop it. By the way, great story. Sorry, great story. If I, t- if I twisted Michael Jordan's titty, I'm telling everybody that. I'm Thanksgiving. <laughs> Every year for 25 years straight. I don't I, I, listen. I don't see why Michael Jordan was such a hard person to work with. Michael Jordan just reminds me of a person that wants you to show up. Yes. So, so by the way, that's all you have to do: show up, bring your fucking a game, and he got your back. I think that's this it. is. I think this is somewhere. I think this is. Uh, I think you just relate to him and your expectations of yourself and the people around you, and I do as well. And I think that it's easier for us to accept his behavior because our behavior at times has probably been more similar. Absolutely. Where, whereas I'm sure you've worked with people who don't subscribe to that and it's probably really hard for them to get his behavior. And they don't win. And, and, and that's the truth. That's the shit Jordan said that was so true. Yep. Like y'all don't, y'all don't want to win. Y'all, y'all don't never win like won me. anything. Yeah, you never you, won anything. Yup. God yep. damn. Yup. It's the truth. It's it, the truth. It, it, but yo, you know what I noticed from this? You know how they're talking about like using the, he used the grudges. He would even make up the grudges to like get him to have that intensity that he needed to win. I, I love it. I know you love that. I was actually thinking about you with that because I know you probably do that on a regular fucking basis. But I love it. They, what I thought was interesting is he was actually so superior to everybody else playing the game at that point in time that all it required was his intensity to guarantee victory. That's what people don't recognize. He was so superior that the game was actually boring to him. So he needed a grudge or a reason to have that focus. And once he applied that focus, you could not beat Jordan. Unbeatable. I I agree with you. And I have never seen, I have never seen a urban legend, a conspiracy theory, addressed so eloquently and such a button put on it that you can't even dispute why he initially walked away after the first three people go on when they when they when they they show you michael jordan's life and how he was a prisoner of his fame yeah 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 and and, and he couldn't go anywhere yeah yeah and it's just like you could tell like he didn't really like that shit like and the only reason he he came back for the three peat 
was because Michael and Magic had, I mean, Magic and Bird had never done it. Because yep. you got to think, at the time, Magic and Bird was the bar. Exactly. Yeah. Until Michael became yeah. the bar. Michael was like, okay, once I get this three feet, I don't care if Magic got more rings than me. Yep. You know what I'm saying? A Bird, Bird, I think Bird got three. He was like, I, I did something they never did before. Yep. I'm, I'm out. You, t- you take that and put on top of that, his father got killed. Mm. Right? It's like, I'm out. Yep. I've Mal, accomplished everything because, I need. Because right here is fucked up. Yeah. Michael Jordan has such a high emotional IQ. The mental was fucked up. Uh-huh. His emotions were fucked up. I can't go out there and perform. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Imagine you was a, a dirty, um, and, and don't think people wouldn't have done this. Imagine you was a dirty ass fucking trash talker. Oh, they be you talking about it. Against, yeah, 100%. Oh, my God. 100%. 100%. Oh, my God. 100%. They have been saying shit about his dad. Wild shit. 100%. I th- if it wasn't, if it, okay, maybe the players wouldn't have. Maybe the writers would 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 have. The writers would and the people in the fucking stands? 100%. Oh, my God. The people in the fucking stands and he would have been out of it mentally. Mm-hmm. So for him to go take that break for a year and a half, like, that shit made so much sense to me. I totally understood it. Yeah. Like when that, there was this one, the one reporter on there who kept saying, Everybody wanted to know why. He, he, he just fucking told you why. Yeah. What the fuck do you mean? Why? I also think. I also think like um, you know how like when a werewolf, a werewolf has such like an intense experience being a werewolf that mm-hmm. when it's done, the guy just wakes up in the middle of a forest and he's like, "What the fuck happened?" You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. Jordan taps into an intensity that few human beings are capable of tapping into outside yeah. of like like a fucking baby being stuck under a, like a car that you need to lift up. You know, like yeah. I think he taps into an intensity that is so pinpointed that there's a cost to that shit. And he did that for eight years in the league or however many years it took him to get his first championship and then win two more. I literally think he was fucking exhausted. I I've think never, you get exhausted yeah, by that. He was, he was, he said he was, he said he was mentally exhausted. And then add I'm the dead. dad shit, add all the other fuck oh, shit. It's man. like, nah, forget it. I'm Forget out. It. I'm out. I'm like, out. Like, it made, like that shit made so much sense to me. I don't know how anybody could ever argue that. That shit yep. wasn't no gambling. It yep. wasn't no suspension. It wasn't none of that. Nah. Like that shit, you've, it's hard for us to fathom that because we've never performed at a level like that. Right. You've never been the most famous motherfucker on in the, the planet. World. You don't know the stress that comes with that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you, are, you don't want to be a prisoner to your success, but guess what? That's what comes with it. Mm-hmm. But a lot of these people realize mm-hmm. I can't wait to leave this shit alone. Uh, I can't wait to go enjoy life. Yeah. And that's what he ultimately did. Yeah. I don't fucking don't care how he dress. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just out here. He owning his fucking Charlotte Hornets team, living his best life. I, I love it. I, I've never seen anything like Michael. Yeah. That, one, that scene when he was in that locker room with that baseball bat, smoking that cigar. Oh, my, that was iconic. He just lost to the Charlotte Hornets. Iconic. I'm getting that shit framed, bro. No, it wasn't. Could, it wasn't after the loss. It was before the game. He was about to play and embarrass B.J. Armstrong. Yeah, because he had lost. He had lost the game before. Oh, I thought you meant it was like right after that game. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had lost, yeah, yeah. He had lost yeah, yeah. the game before. We're on the same just, page. But him sitting there with the bat, iconic, smoking a cigar, and the dude's like, I forgot who he was talking to. I think it might have been Ron Harper. He was like, "Are you upset?" He's like, "No." What I got to be upset about? Knowing he's pissed the fuck off. Oh my off. god. <laughs> Oh my God. Just next level. But dude, bro, taking the no hacks. Like that, bro. Dude, taking the hacks with that bat, cigar in his mouth. Like, that's something out of a cartoon. That's something a super villain does in a movie. Yes, right? Man. That is a yes. Marvel movie yes. super villain. Has a bat that he's hitting like this in his hand while smoking a go- cigar before he goes and, you know, handles his business. What about when he's turned into Lil Duval when he was like, what that mouth do, ho? What the fuck was he saying? Yo, he son. was to when he was talking like, to Burrell. Yeah, he was like, "What?" The, he was like, "You fucking hope, something, yeah, something you hope. bitch, you hope, blah, blah, blah. bitch, hope." Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's how I know he let the maggot fly. Oh, they did some clever editing for sure. Oh, uh, uh, listen, <laughs> the night I know for a fact that word got edited out of the last dance at son, least no less than seven hundred fifty. Keep times. it one hundred. You barely hear him say the n word. I don't even know if he says the n word once. Yeah, you think Jordan that. wasn't dropping the M bomb? Oh, listen, Scotty, Jordan, all of them. Come on, bro. Yeah, the only person that came close to saying it was Carmen Electra. <laughs> Carmen Electra. No, no. When Jordan walked was, in the hotel room, yes, Who she was, was quoting. This? She was, yeah, exactly. She was quoting Jordan, and they just cut it right when she was like that. <laughs> she was like Michael walked in and said, and they they just cut it. She's the only one. But that shit was good. 
I man, it. it was so. I can't. They just finished. They they they're still editing episode ten now. That's what I heard. Yeah, they hadn't finished it because they moved it up. Yeah, it was supposed to come out in June, so they moved it up. Uh, so it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how it ends, man. I'm not gonna lie, I almost cried. The father shit, man, when he was on that was floor tough. sobbing, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. That shit, that shit was almost fucking Thomas J and my girl getting stung by the bees, bro. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, bro. That shit was right there. The tears didn't fall, but but like everything up to when I'm when I'm about to cry, everything that leads right up to them tears that's coming. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Boy, that shit touched me, man. Yeah. Because all of the, all of these years, I thought he was crying tears of joy. Nah, huh? Just because he had came back, that motherfucker was in agony. Yeah. Like he was hurt. Yeah. Like, cause you never heard him cry before. Nah. Right? It was always the picture. But when you hear him fucking uh, like weep, like now you now you know why that Jordan meme was so ugly. Cause when he cries, he cries. Bro, Michael got the worst ugly cry of all fucking time. Like, God damn. Like he that that was I mean, sobbing. Like yeah. I was like, oh shit. And it was justifiable. I understood the pain. Yeah. Got I it. understood exactly why why he did what he did, man. I I I have a new respect for Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan gotta be. I don't know, man. That's one of the greatest motherfuckers ever lived. Oh, great. One of the greatest humans. Yo, <laughs> they one said of the greatest it, humans ever, bro. They said it really good. Uh they they they're like you could make the argument, and most people would, that Michael Jordan is the best at doing his job, or is better at doing his job than anybody in the history of doing their job. I agree. And that is that is a really interesting thing to say, but it's truthful. Who was better at their job than Jordan was at his? Alexander the Great? Genghis Khan? Like, the only people you can truly compare him to in terms of doing their job? People that changed the fucking world. Change the world, bruh! revolutionized the world you're not even talking about athletes now right we're talking about people who uh, what Masa Musa or whatever that fucking guy was like you're talking yeah. about you're talking you're going thousands of years back and you're talking about people who changed the fucking world dude yeah bro Woo! yeah 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 Look, think and, about and, this and, sincerely think about this sincerely you're going into battle and you need a general would there be somebody better than Michael Jordan rallying no. troops? No. This is what he does for a frivolous little game of basketball. Imagine life or death. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I've never seen no shit like it ever, honestly. Like, it's actually very, it kind of shows you what your, what, what your brain is capable of doing, too. You know what I mean? Like he's I using to, I, more than we're using. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yes. I would love to hold see. On, some I got, hold on. I got to take a piss. I'll be right back. I'll be right, right back. All right. Andrew took a piss. Uh, listen, man. Um, I think we almost done. No, you I had just, a point before I went to take a piss, oh, which was no, Jordan I was, was saying, tapping into. Oh, yeah. Jordan was tapping into something in his mind that um, most humans don't tap into. You know, it's just a level of whatever you want to call it. The law of attraction. You know, you want to call it the power of intention, whatever you want to call it. He was tapping into something in his mind where he had a level of, mm. man, I wouldn't even call it optimism. Optimism ain't, optimism is not the word. Intensity. Optimism is the hope for something. It, I think it's more than intensity. It's like, yo, you're not going to beat me. Focus. I, I think what it was is at his highest ability, he couldn't be beaten. But in order to get to his highest ability, he needed to have extreme intensity and focus. And he's like a real life superhero. Like he has, like Hulk has to get angry for powers. That's what Jordan was. He needed that. Like, like he was almost like the monster, right? He was the monster. That shit was kind of based yes, off his life. Yes. He was, I, let me still, let me take this from you. You give me that George call. You walk by me in a fucking restaurant and don't say hi. Grr, come on, I'm gonna eat that. Nah, That's now it. You can't beat me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, a uh, fucking, um, who was the other guy? Uh, the Mar Bradford. You put your fucking arm around me and told me nice game. How dare you compliment me? Cocksucker. Yo, imagine what he would have did to the Pistons if there was another game after the Pistons walked off the court and didn't Oh, shake. forget it. Shake. Forget <laughs> it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget you might have scored 100. Forget it. Forget it. I mean, it's not even, it, it's just, it's not even a question. And it is fascinating to see the other players talk about it because the Hulk reference is the best. Because what do other people say about Hulk? You don't, don't want to piss him, him off. You don't yeah, want to make you, him you would, angry. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. You wouldn't like when he's angry. And 
as these everybody, players, coaches, etc., go, man, we shouldn't have done that. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Hey, you shouldn't have did that. Because the players themselves knew that when Mike taps into that extra level, there's nothing that can be done. Nothing. So why so why didn't anybody ever get smart and just be nice as fuck to Mike? Ty Burrell did. <laughs> Scott Burrell. Whatever Scott Burrell did. But I'm I'm, I'm talking about the opposition because clearly yeah. he didn't have no problems having fun. Like he would go golfing with Danny A and shit like that. Yeah. Like why wouldn't you just be extra nice to Mike? Yeah, you should. Hey, you're the best, Mike. You're Chilling so with kindness. Good. Yep. Mike might have been that might have been the only way to beat him. Mike, you're the best. You are Lo- so good, Mike. Love might have been Michael's Achilles heel. Yes. Word up. Yes, Love. that is true. I'm going to tell you the other impressive thing about Mike. He didn't get hurt. He got hurt that one season. And it's like after that, smooth sailing, bro. It's unbelievable. Unfucking it's unbelievable. Real. Unreal. And it's not like he really, I mean, yeah, he took care of his body. He had the Tim Grover was his trainer, but like, it's not like he wasn't out drinking and smoking. It's not like oh. he wasn't, it's not like he was sleeping all the time. Like this guy yeah. really pushed his body to the limits and still maintained like peak physical condition. It's unreal. unreal. He's, he's, he's unreal. the goat. He is the standard. He is he's the, the standard. standard. He's the standard. I wish Skip Bayless would lay off LeBron though. Why was he like, saying? It's just like every week, like this does not, this is not about, cause here's the thing. It's unfair to attack LeBron over the greatness of Michael Jordan. Cause all LeBron is, is another player under Michael Jordan. Yeah. And it's a, bu- it's, it's every, it, it, by the way, it's literally everybody else. <laughs> like, like that's yeah. just the truth to the matter. It's Michael Jordan and then everybody else. And you can rank everybody else however you want. Is Bron, is Bron top tier after Jordan? Of course he is. Of course he is. And that's great company to be in. Cause you got Jordan, you got Magic, you got Bird, you got all of these great players. But it's just like, Skip Bayless goes out of his way to fucking like, Shit on LeBron as if LeBron is really any threat to Michael Jordan's legacy. Mm. He's not. Yeah. He's not. He's not. Yeah. He's they, not. They just bored. They just need some shit to talk about. Listen, um, I want to uh end by saying rest in peace. Six nine. Um, t- yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe one day. God bless him. I pray. I pray for I pray for everybody. So I pray that don't happen. But whatever. But I pray rest <laughs> in peace to Andre Harrell. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying Andre Harrell is um a a a a a good guy, man, a good brother, somebody who over the past I say four years, um, I've had many an extensive conversation with. You know, you've heard me say a million times, my top two favorite record labels of all time are Rockefeller Records and Uptown Records. Um, I've always been a huge Uptown fanatic. I've always been somebody who championed Uptown. You know, when the new edition movie came out, I was like, yo, this needs to be the next movie that, that gets made. Mm. The Uptown Records biopic. And I'm not sure how me and Andre connected. I don't know if it was through that or maybe it was through Revolt. I'm not sure what it was. But, man, that was a brother that I used to have a lot of great conversations with. I actually spoke to him uh, that Tuesday. He died on a Thursday. I spoke to him that Tuesday. And it's just so interesting, right? Because... On Tuesday, he sent me, he started, he started texting me at like five in the morning. Cause a lot of people know I'm up that time. So they either call or text, but he started texting me about five in the morning. And it was about one specific thing. And from five o'clock that morning to about probably 1130 that night, he just sent me all of these. When, when I go back and read it, it's all of these detailed messages about something he wants to execute and how we should go about it step by step, mm. right? And the last thing I said to him was, um, yo, this is very interesting. I'm going to send you, you know, some of the stuff that I'm working on tomorrow because it's kind of in the same vein. And he was like, and, 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 and I, I, keep, I keep looking at that text and it just made me think like, wow, there was no tomorrow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was that Tuesday and it was Wednesday. He passed on sometime Thursday. And then Wednesday, I was looking at, you know, my man, Jesse Collins. Jesse Collins had posted on Instagram about how, Andre was calling him and Andre was adamant about um, you know, adding something to the story of the Uptown Records, you know, biopic. Like, yo, I want this in. I want this in. We got to make sure we land the ending, whatever, whatever. Like he was just very adamant about that. Right. And it just makes me think like, yo, man, do, do, do we know? You know what I mean? Like, do we know when 
And then I think about my grandmother. My grandmother, she, you know, uh, she she passed away on Cinco de Mayo in 2006. Like my mom and my little brother always say she put her wig on. Like she was going somewhere, sat in her favorite chair and passed away. Mm. So it, just all, it all, always makes me wonder, do, do people do people know? You know what I mean? And, it, and it, it hurts me that somebody like Andre, who was about to get celebrated in a real way because, you know, BET greenlit the Uptown Records miniseries last year. Mm. You no, know, and he had been, you know, working with the writers on the script. And, you know, he's very involved with the project. I mean, right, you know, very, very involved with the project. So I, I was looking forward to seeing him get his flowers, you know what I mean? And, 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 and be celebrated by the culture in real time. Like me and Andre have been talking about for the, for the longest, yo, the, 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 the Uptown Records movie release party, it's gotta be 90s themed and you know what I'm saying? New Jack City wear, like all of that type. Like we have been having these conversations since the mm. three or four years that I've that I known him, you know what I mean? So I don't know, it's just sad. And he was such a good brother. He did a lot of things for me uh, personally and professionally that he didn't have to do. Um, you know, it's a young lady named Gina Lisa. Salute to Gina Lisa. Uh, Gina Lisa works for like Medicaid, if I'm not mistaken. But I remember me and Andre having this long conversation about people being taken care of when they're older. Like, mm. you know, your mother... You know, your father, like when they get older and they got dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever it is, it's like, yo, who takes care of the parents in these situations? And he was just saying like, yo, you really need to sit down with this, you know, uh, young woman, Gina Lisa, because this mm. is what she does. People don't even know that these type of things are available. You can have caretakers and this and that and Medicaid will pay for it. Like all of it. Like he was just very in tune about stuff like that. Just so happened. Somebody in my family, actually my wife's family, really needed that at the time. You know what I'm mm. saying? My, my, my wife's grandmother. So me having that information and just passing it along, like, yo, this is what Andre told me. We ended up making that happen. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So now it's just like my, my wife's grandmother has the care that she needs and, 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 you know, the right people are being paid for. So it's just like little things like that on a professional level. He helped me with, mm. and I mean, I, I definitely showed him mad love for it. You know what I'm saying? And then I always told him how much I appreciated him and, and valued him. And I even had Gina Lisa on the show after that. If you go look up on the breakfast club, it's a YouTube interview with a woman named Gina Lisa. So for anybody out there who has, you know, elders in their family that need, you know, caretakers or caregivers, I can't remember what the exact term is. Like you just need some type of help in that arena. You should go watch that interview. Cause she can, you know, push you towards that. But that's what Andre that's one of the messages Andre wanted to get out. Like he's, his mind was always on the future, mm. the futuristic vision. Yo, Charlotte, man, you ever thought about when you 70 years old, 80 years old, you know what I mean? Like who's going to take care of you? You know, who, like I, I, who, who's going to take care of me when I get older? So he was always on that mindset, man. Just a good, 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 good brother. Somebody who I model. Um, just, just I, I'm not gonna say model because I was already doing it, but somebody I look at when I see him and I say that's the way you're supposed to move. Mm. Like every every everybody around you should be bigger than you. Like you should be you should be in the business of making stars. Mm. You should be in the business of empowering people. You right. Know what I'm saying like uh, Andre Harrell threw way more assists than than he necessarily scored points. You know, what right. I mean? but he won. But they were all part of his team. Right. You know, Mary J. Blige, Jodeci, Heavy D, I'll be sure, Christopher Williams. Oh, Diddy is an intern, you know, um, empowering Diddy and getting bad boy used to be under Uptown. So that's how you got Biggie, you know, Robin Thicke, you know, whether I mean, he's just empowered so many different people. man. Mm. So I don't know if people really, truly understand. You know, the loss that the culture took, mm. but we definitely we, def we definitely took a loss with that one. But it's just a reminder that tomorrow is not promised. Mm. So, you know, the, the, the goal isn't to live forever goal is to create something that does. Mm. And Andre Amen. Harrell def Andre Harrell definitely did that. So rest in peace, Dre. May Allah be pleased with you. Definitely going to miss him in a real, real way. And um, BT, it's a lot of pressure. But, 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 but Andre was, was knee deep into that story. The story is, was, is told. He told the story. So it's not like what, what you see when the, when the biopic comes out, that's, 
all from the mind of Andre. Like, you mm. know what I mean? It's nothing like Andre was very involved in the writing and everything else. Like he was knee deep in it, mm. you know? And it's not like it was halfway done. Like it's like the story is going to be told the way he would want it to be. Mm. So that's that. We good? I think we good, man. All I right. think we good, man. Guys, thank Thanks. you guys so much for listening, man. Yes, sir. Um, Don't forget, I, ask idiot. Oh, we oh, gotta run. Shit. I gotta. I'm sorry. I gotta run, guys. Yeah, I can't do an ask. We'll idiot. do ask we'll idiot do it next, next week. week. Yeah, man. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You think we're intelligent. You think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.